Test one, two, three. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Falcon Field at the Astound Broadband Stadium. Tonight's game features the Mountaineers of Western Colorado and your UTPB Falcons. If you can't make it to the game, watch live or listen to our UTPB Falcons play-by-play -play on the LSC Digital Network. You can find the link to the broadcast on our UTPB website. Thank you for your support of UTPB football. The laws of the state of Texas prohibit smoking in all areas of a sound broadband stadium. Please help us comply with this law by not smoking inside the gates of a sound broadband stadium. Thank you for your cooperation and your consideration. Fans, our concession areas are located on the concourse areas of the stadium. Be sure to stop by to get all your favorite game day snacks and drinks. And you can keep up with all the Falcon athletic teams by visiting the official athletics website, utpbfalcons.com, or download our UTPB Athletics app. It's your stop for the latest Falcon athletic news and scores. Also, follow the Falcons on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for UTPB Falcons Athletics. And don't forget to tweet about your game day experiences using the official UTPB Athletics hashtag, Falcons Up. Bobby, Bobby. Okay, we got a couple things. First of all, are we taking a break after the team runs on the field here? Clay, tell him what you just said. What did I say? You said something about keep keep going if they if you needed to. What did you just say? Oh no, he said don't. He said go ahead and take a break. Uh, okay. And <clears throat> did you want to do a sound check? Are we okay? Are you want to do a sound check? Hagen, hush it. <clears throat> Nip it, Hagen. Nip it in the bud. In the now on the north end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to Astound Broadpan Stadium for tonight's Falcons game, pitting the UTPB versus Western Colorado Mountaineers. Yes, this is the first time that these two schools have. Uh, okay.
Falcon fans. Now into the field is the UTPD's very own Spirit of the Permian Basin Marching Band. Introducing drum major Brandon Leifert and feature twirlers Maddie Clark, Michaela Hernandez, and Jackie Santos. Let the 2022 show begin this evening with the exciting sounds of the Falcon Fanfare. Stay on your feet, Falcon fans, as the band performs a true Texas tradition, March Grandioso! Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America and those who support our freedom at home with the playing of our national anthem. Today's performance is, per is conducted by Dr. Brian Brown, Director of Bands for the University of Texas at the Permian Basin.
Time to put your hands together. Green Bay Band is the band of the Spear Squad. Recognize our very own Freddie Falcon with the performance of Light of the Falcon. This concludes the spirit of the Permian Basin's pregame show. The band is under the direction of Dr. Brian Brown, Associate Director of Bands, Dr. Lindsey Iben, Percussion Instructor, Dr. Tim Fierce, and Featured Twirling Coach, Ms. Emily Ann Grito.
Welcome to Astound Broadband Stadium for tonight's game featuring your UTPB Falcons against the Western Colorado Mountaineers of Gunnison, Colorado. Got a good matchup tonight. Both teams uh, disappointing losses last week coming in tonight looking for their first wins of the season. Uh, it's a beautiful evening here, 89 degrees, winds coming out of the east, northeast at all oh, about 10 to 15 miles an hour. So we'll be back here to Astound Broadbad Stadium for Kyle's keys to the game after this. Captains for the visiting Mountaineers, number four, Connor Desch, number five. Welcome Tim to Miller, Astound Broadband Stadium in Midland, Texas, for tonight's game Brown. featuring the UTPB Falcons and the Western Captains Colorado Falcons, University three, Mountaineers. Dylan Both Graham, teams coming off number five, a uh, disappointing Lee, first week to the season seven, and DeAndre looking for their first win of the year. Kelly. Trans Global Productions is happy to have you here for our college high school game of the week. Produced and directed. Uh, college game of the week produced and directed by Bob Bailey. Uh, I'm Clay Kennedy along with Kyle Hubbard and Larry Thornhill and looking forward to an exciting ball game. And Kyle, let's look to you now for our, uh, is there, doing the coin flip let's look to you for our uh, keys of the ball game well i think uh, for utpb a couple things stand out uh really big clay last week the o the uh, utpb offensive line really struggled uh in the ball game they've got to be able to uh protect dylan graham their quarterback and allow him to have time to uh, make his progressions when he's ready to throw the football they need to protect him give him a chance make those prog progressions and uh, uh, deliver the ball. Uh, I think they need to establish a running game, Clay. Last week, uh, we had a stat during last week's game that I think really says it all. <laughs> TPB won the toss and is going to defer. They've got to run the football, Clay. They only had 17 yards rushing last week in all, the game. All ball game, they had... 11 first downs, but only got one of those via the rush. Yeah, the they rest can't, were on pass play. can't have that tonight. You've got to be able to run the football and mix the run and the pass in, in your uh, game plan tonight. I think the defensive line has got to neutralize the offensive line of Western Colorado. They need to make sure one thing they talked about this week uh, in the paper and on TV was about getting lined up, getting declared so that they could uh, – uh, get their defense in the right position so they can make the play. And, and I, I think you can't panic if you get behind. Stay within your program and, and within your game plan and allow uh, your team to continue to stay in the ball game and uh, make this as close as you can so that you have a chance to pull it out toward the end. Well, this uh, Western Colorado team uh, coached by Jazz Baines, he's in his, starting his 12th season in Gunnison, Colorado. He was the coach of the year last year in the uh, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and uh, led the uh, Mountaineers to a 8-1 uh, and one record in conference, a conference championship, went to the playoffs, and a 10-2 record overall last season. So uh, expecting big things this year and went up to, uh, went down for them, down, up for us to Canyon and uh, played West Texas A&M last week and uh, got beat 44 to six very convincingly. So uh, much as UTPB struggling in the first week, both teams gonna be seeking that uh, first win of the season and, tonight. And get some momentum to propel them through the next part of their season is 
Uh, they get ready to or so start their conference plays, both teams here in a couple weeks. And uh, they need to establish some momentum and some confidence for their programs. Uh, there are about 2,600 undergraduates uh, enrolled at uh, Western Colorado, about 400 graduate students every year with about 25% of those coming from out of state. Michael Mayfield to kick off for the Falcons and the ball goes out of bounds inside the five. So I feel sure we will see the Mountaineers take over at the 25 yard line, first and 10. We're expecting to see Connor Desch, their senior quarterback, number four to start for the Mountaineers. Running backs, we expect to see Braden Hogan, a sophomore, and Matt Cordova, a senior. Uh, wide receivers, Andrew Montez, Victory David, and Damian Mas Macias at the wide receiver spot with Nathan Meyer and Daniel Parsec at the tight end position. Do the offensive line after this play. Well, the ball is actually going to, they're going to start from the 35 yard line. I stand corrected. The Mountaineers, uh, very good rushing team last year. And there's the pitch wide. And nowhere to go. That's a great play by number 94 for the Falcons at the uh, defensive end position. Uh, that is, let me find his name right quick, Dominic Varela, a junior from El Paso. D gap, outside gap, responsibility clay, just went right down the line of scrimmage and made the play for about a three yard loss on first down. So bring up a second and 13. The ball is kept by Dash around that right side, and he is drilled at the 35-yard line. Better He's going to set up a third and 10. Number nine for the Falcons out on the edge to make the play. Actually, I believe that was number eight. He had LeVon Barnett to come up from the safety position and fill that, fill that alley to make it third and 10 here. If the Falcons can hold them and get off the field. Too much pressure, and he's going to go down for a big loss. It's going to set up a fourth down and a punting situation for the Mountaineers. That's the Mountaineers, and that's actually Nethercott, uh, Luke Nethercott in at quarterback for the Mountaineers. And number 94, Dominic Varela, already making his presence felt on the field in that first defensive set with a sack there on third down. Loss of about 10 on the play and going to force Western Colorado to have to punt the football. Uh, Varela, second sack of the season as he had one last week as well. A booming punt. Going to be taken back at the 30-yard line there by uh, Ad Abzek. And uh, Falcons will start from that 30-yard line. 45 yards on the punt. He sure did do a nice job of getting that ball to turn over like a pass and forcing the Falcons to backpedal and make the fair catch. They will start first and 10 from their 30. We expect to see Dylan Graham at quarterback for the Falcons. Nate Tilford, we expect to see at running back along with Corey Harris. We'll do the linemen and, the li and hopefully the receivers here in just a moment. And is to Tilford up the middle, and he fights forward, but is only going to get back to the line of scrimmage as too much penetration uh, from the defensive line of the Mountaineers. MJ Link, Tim Wiggins, Marcus Molina, Gunnar Absick, who was the leading catcher for the uh, wide receiver core of UTPB last week. Shamar Davis, we expect to see. Tilford once again up the middle, going to find the going a little better as he pulls his way game. forward for a gain of four, setting up a third down and six. Offensive line is anchored at the center position by Xavier Orta, Seven number 76. Guards number 65, Dave Dawson Phillips. Reynolds, and 77, Ramon Diaz. And the tackles number 67, Pessy Savea and Jawan Kalyans. 
Pass is complete to Absec, and he is going to have a Falcon first down exactly at the 40-yard line. Saw him line up in the spot there, or in the slot, I should say, just a little five- or six-yard quick out and was able to slip a tackle and get the Falcon first down. Good throw, good catch from Graham to Absic. Graham fires again, this time in and out of the hands of MJ Link would not would have gone down immediately had he caught it for a short game, but it's going to be incomplete. Yep, one-on-one -on -one coverage here out here. Just tried to run a little quick stop route, and ball did not get to MJ for him to make that catch. Clay's right. He'd have been right down right there, the corner on top of him. No completion on the play. Boy, a lot of penetration once again by that front line. Of the Mountaineers, going to be a no gain as Tilford hit immediately as he takes a handoff, fights his way back to the line of scrimmage, but another third down situation for the Falcons. Falcons going no huddle here, a little hurry up tempo action. See if they can get that Western Colorado defense on their heels, and getting the play from the line of from the sideline to run here from the 40. He has the time. He. Fires the link, just had to get rid of it too soon, and link not able to find it. So that's going to bring up a fourth and ten in a passing formation. I mean, a punting situation for the Falcons. Sergio Landeros on to do the punting. Uh, seven punts last week. That's a little more than you like to have in a ball game, but averaged uh, 44 and a half yards. We saw him hit some boomers in warm ups today. Oh. So let's see if he can. Get them pinned down there inside that 20-yard line. Make them have to go the length of the field. Well, a heavy rush there. He is going to get a good roll. Actually uh, saved as it picked up there at the 25-yard line by the Mountaineers. Timeout. And they're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll do the same. Score is 0-0. We'll be back after this. Great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. I don't care what kind of stories that's been told on you. That may be a lot of things in life you used to do. Six carbs and 95 calories. Your plan, our promise. UT Permian Basin. As we resume play, first and 10 for the Mountaineers, ball at the 36 yard line. All right, first and 10 for the Mountaineers from their own 36 yard line. Nethercott once again in the ball game at uh, quarterback. Uh, backed up there by Damian Macias in the backfield, who takes a handoff, fights his way forward for a short gain of about two yards for the Mountaineers. Lon Barnett, number eight, watch their instant replay here. As uh, you're going to see, just kind of tiptoe three. You see Barnett come in right there, the senior from West Palm Beach, Florida, to make the tackle only for two yards on the gain on first down. That's his second pretty, pretty, pretty good hit of the ball yep. game here early in the first quarter. 
Uh, Barnett showing some physicality. Nethercott back to pass, swings it out to Macias, who is listed as a receiver. He's going to be dragged down at the 41-yard line. Uh, it's going to be a pickup of only three yards as he did most of his running uh, east and west, not north and south. Well, uh, Hayden Kelly, the linebacker, number 42, a 5'11", 220-pound junior from Magnolia, Texas, running that receiver down out of the backfield, holding him to about two or three yards. Here's a big third down already. Nethercott's got two receivers at the top of the screen, one to the bottom looking for the tight end over the middle but he's covered he takes off on the run and he's going to come up oh it's going to be close it's going to be close Kyle's saying he's got it we'll see yep he's got the first down right at the 46 yard line yeah they UTPB secondary and linebackers did a good job of picking up receivers they try to run a double drag route from the slot position on each side UTPB picked it up so the quarterback didn't have anything open, just took off and ran and got a Mountaineer first down. Macias in the backfield with Nethercott. Oh. Go absolutely nowhere. Gonna lose a yard, maybe two, is great so penetration by the Falcons front. 52 on the tackle, Eldon uh, Titania. From the linebacker position, number 52 made the play. Actually, for a two-yard two loss on first down. Defense doing a good job at the line of scrimmage right now. High snap. Nethercott pulls it down on the wide receiver screen. Caught by White. And he is going to weave his way around. There's a late flag on the sideline. He's going to pick up. About seven or eight yards, but let's see what the penalty's going to be. I think it's going to be holding up there at the top of the screen. There it is right there, Clay. They're going to have holding <laughs> on the slot guy right there, and that's, yeah. a, that's a WWE takedown. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number 30, 15 from the end of the run. First down. Wow, goodness. Well, that's a big penalty. I thought it was going to go the other way. And it's a face mask penalty against the Falcons. Going to move it up 15 yards to the Falcon 31-yard line and a first down for Western Colorado. Ball at the 31-yard line. Well, penalties can be a killer, and that one is for the Falcons. Going to set the Mountaineers up in good field position here. Nethercott rolls to his left, throws, and uh, – ball is incomplete intended out there I believe for maybe Hudson Grant good penetration off the right side of the defensive line from the Falcons to get in that backfield and force a very hurried throw from the quarterback from Norton Nethercott second down Nethercott did come in and play a good bit last week Macias over the right side, going to find the going a little tough. Pulled down after a gain of about four is going to set the Mountaineers up again, third down and six. Watch from the south end zone. You can see the hole come open off of their right side, and Darian Forge, the senior linebacker from Mesquite, making the play for the Falcon defense. Could be a four-point play right here, Clay. Nethercott, time in the pocket. Now he's crushed out, and he's going to be pulled down from behind by the Falcons. That's number 56. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage by number 56. <laughs> Tehuma. Tehuma. Yeah. Tehuma. Comes up with the sack back at the original line of scrimmage, so... He was a little excited when he made that play, well, didn't he? I was, I was too. Yeah. So, yeah. kicking situation, they're going to bring Alec Fonseca out. He was a 10 of 15 in field goals last year, had a long of 49. This one's going to be about 48, so right at his uh, longest kick of his career. The wind is definitely helping it. It has picked up. 
So he's got a lot of wind at his back, but the kick is going to be nowhere near fall short in the end zone. So the Falcons bend and don't break and take over at their own 31-yard line. It's a good job by the Falcon defense, as you said, bend but don't break and hold them off the scoreboard. And they will have the ball first and 10 at their own 31. You know, Western Colorado uh, offers more than 100 graduate uh, undergraduate areas of study and seven graduate programs uh, at the university. They also have a, an accelerated degree program. And uh, we'll give you a little more information on Western Whoa. as we get through the, uh, the ball game here. Graham keeps his composure there. Boy, he really got rocked after he threw that, but uh, goes up and takes the high snap and completes it out to Link and picks up four yards. Yeah, good job of executing what he could to get that to Link, and they got about four yards on first down. So second down now and six for the Falcons. Brock Johnson there in the H-back slot. Keeps it around the left side and uh, just picked up and slammed to the ground there by the Mountaineers. Ian Loomis on the tackle. Going to be a loss of two instead of the Falcons with a third and eight. There's the instant replay right there. You can see Loomis just coming from his linebacker position to fill and make the play. Did a good job of getting the Falcon quarterback down. Link at the bottom of the screen, but Double coverage, fires for the tight end. Johnson, he makes the catch, but unfortunately did not reach the first down marker. And the Falcons are going to be looking at a fourth and one. Oh, they're going to line up. Looks like they're going to go for it right quick here. And they are. Tilford fights his way forward, but he is not going to get there as he has stood up at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be a no gain. And the Mountaineers will take over at the 40-yard line. They tried to go really fast with tempo there, Clay, and they did not get the point of attack blocked at all. I'm talking about the Falcon offensive line. They did not get it attacked at all and uh, get it blocked to any degree, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. So now you're going to look to your defense to really stand up here and uh, try and keep the Mountaineers off of the uh, scoreboard once again. The Mountaineers had a uh, running back last year. Josh Cummings rushed for over 1,300 yards, 17 touchdowns, averaged 4.9 yards a carry, but uh, did not play last week and is not playing this week. Not sure why. Oh. Heathercott's looking deep, and he's going to be caught, but I believe he's going to be out of bounds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to say out of bounds, intended for and caught there, I believe, Malik White on the catch. Well, like one of those Second back shoulder there. throws that they tried to complete right. up the sideline here. It's one of those where, uh, uh, oh, Eli Manning used to tell, I mean, not Eli, his brother Peyton, used to tell him, you just run that and I'll throw you open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Second and 10 from the 40 for the Mountaineers. Nethercott gives to Macias, and Macias has nowhere to go. He is still scrambling, and he is going by far the wrong way. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's almost 20 yards. That the wrong is going to be a loss of 18 yards where they have it marked back to the. Mountaineer, uh, Mountaineers own 42 yard line. And made that play to start off with was number 94. We've already called his name a few times uh, for the Falcon defense. That's Dominic Perella just had his gap responsibility and forced that runner to uh, make that bad mistake in going backwards all the way to the Mountaineer 42 yard line. Third down now and 28. Not many of those plays in your score in your playbook. Nethercott dumps it off. It's going to be caught. I believe that's Macias it is. And he's going to pick up about 10, 11 yards out to the 49. And I assume we'll bring up a punting situation. Caleb Pearson, the linebacker, number 22, had good position there. Did not give up inside leverage back in toward the middle of the field once that running back caught the ball. Just forced him to the sideline, got him out of bounds at the Mountaineer 49-yard line. Well, 
Well, quarterback Nethercott stays on to do the punting. Snap is good. He rolls right. He's going to try and kick a little roller there, but it's going to go out of bounds and uh, not going to net a whole lot. Looks like it's out of bounds at about the 24-yard line, looks like. No. Time out. Time out. We're going to take a time out here. 430 remaining in the first quarter. Your score still 0-0. Zero, zero. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Welcome back to uh, Astound Broadband Stadium, Midland, Texas. The Falcons defense once again stands up and now see if they can get the offense rolling, Kyle. Yep, offensive line has got to pick up their assignments, get some positive yards on first down. You can already see, looks like Western Colorado gonna bring a blitz from the outside. Wow. Yep. It's a nice catch, but unfortunately, defender Almost had him before he caught the ball. Catch by Absec, but it's gonna you're gonna mark him back at the line of scrimmage, so no game. Yeah, the uh, the uh, tight end out there trying to block on the uh, corner set that little screen pass up, and uh, uh, Brock Johnson just got beat by the defender there and caused an incompletion to bring up second down. Snap once again a little bit high and. Uh, Makes it difficult, Graham able to pull it down, but throws his timing off, and he's gonna go down again as the pressure comes yeah, once again. Here. Number seven, Dominic Retcher, comes from his linebacker position, is gonna pull Graham back at the 12 yard line for a loss of 12. Yeah, and you can bet they've seen on film, Clay, that right now this UTPB offensive line is having trouble picking up blitzes and getting, uh, getting those blitzes protected they came with a full-fledged blitz off the left side there. Yep. Did it again. Tilford still on his feet around the right side. Going to actually get some forward yardage at least out to the, the going to mark him at the 18-yard line for a gain of six. But once again, UTPB is going to be looking at uh, Landeros booting it away. Yep. Going to have to come up with one of those super punts that he uh, – he does, and see if he can flip the field a little bit here. Well, had, had, I can't remember, like seven punts over 50 yards two years ago, and in that spring season, only five games, I think he had three or four punts over 50 yards. Yep. So, yeah, that would be a, be a good time for one. Unfortunately, the wind in his face still gets away a good kick, and uh, coverage is going to be there, hold the re uh, return man to only six yards, but... 
The Mountaineers will take over at the 50-yard line. And they brought pressure, Clay, on they that did. punt. Tried to get to the uh, punter. Almost got there to get it blocked. And Darrell did a good job of getting it away. And as you said, the punt coverage team down there to make the tackle. Mountaineers have the ball first and 10 from the 50-yard line. TPB defense has got to answer again. Well, Macias, helped by his 18-yard lo loss a minute ago, now has uh, five carries for a minus 16 yards. So hadn't done much, and then uh, really hurt himself on that. Here he takes the handoff. He's grabbed in the backfield again and is going to go no nowhere, going to lose yardage again on first down. Is Great penetration by the Falcons. Yeah, I think it's 93, 97, 97 uh, off the edge. Joseph Williams. Man, he looked like he uh, he, he knew was, the play. Yeah, didn't he? he was in the backfield before they snapped the ball. Yeah. Second and long, second and 12. Nethercott's going to look to throw, drops it off for the tight end. It's caught there by number 83. Daniel Parsec, but boy, he is immediately planted into the turf. DeAndre Robinson, the 5'10", 190 pound senior from Orange, New Jersey, coming up to make the play. Well, we've heard that name a lot yes, over the have. last few years. Yes, we, we have. Very physical player. Substitutions coming off their sideline for Western Colorado. Third and about six. Let's see if the UTPB defense can do three and out and get off the field. See if they can get a little pressure on Nethercott. Looks like they're only going to rush three. Gets it away, and it's going to be caught out there, still on his feet. I believe the catch by number 11, Kai Emsley, is going to be more than enough for the first down. Yep, just ran a little quick out route, about five yards. Beat the coverage. Coming from number one there, Dante Stewart. And I got away and on up the sideline for a Western Colorado first down. Nethercott once again, two receivers at the bottom of the screen. Uh, running back is Macias, who, like I said, uh, was actually their leading receiver last year. Macias had uh, 33 catches for 386 yards. He's the leading returning receiver. Uh, Going to take the handoff and just absolutely nowhere to go as once again the Falcons in the backfield immediately. Victor Adesui, the Adesui. nose tackle. Adesui made the play. Penetration from the nose tackle position. Beat the center and got in the backfield for a one-yard loss. Second and 11 now. The Mountaineers running. Three receivers at the bottom of the screen. Tight end is lined up at the top of the line there. So uh, see if he gets out into uh, the secondary. No, he's going to block another running play. Macias this time finds the going open up the middle and fights his way forward for a first down to about the 21-yard line. And you can see on our instant replay, just a good hole off the left side, good push, and got up the field for... A Mountaineer first down. Nethercott, uh, see what he did last week. As he hands the ball to Macias again, Macias uh, pauses and able to get away from one man in the backfield and actually get some positive yardage again down to the 19. See right there, penetration from the linebackers. And finishing off the tackle, number 22, Kayla Pearson for the Falcons. Nethercott was 7 for 11 last week uh, against uh, West Texas A&M. Had 67 yards, uh, did uh, suffer a sack, and threw one interception. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So we're going to end it with the Mountaineers driving, but your score is 0-0. Zero to zero. We'll be back to Stown Broadband Stadium after this. Say it again. Today's hometown hero is Becky Patton. Becky has been teaching for 30 plus years and currently teaches life skills to special needs students at Legacy High School, home of the Rebels. She not only teaches academics and daily life skills to her students, 
but she also created a program called Rebel Line, which allows her students to learn how to work and earn money. Becky puts her heart into each individual child and goes the extra mile to help her students reach goals to graduate. It takes a special kind of person to do the job Becky does. Thank you, Becky, you for all you do. Joining Becky on the field are University President Dr. Sandra Woodley and Director Athletics Todd Dooley. Ladies and gentlemen, our hometown hero, Becky Patton. Well, we want to welcome you back here to Astound Broadband Stadium in Midland, Texas for your Trans Global Productions College football game of the week. The Mountaineers of Western Colorado facing a second and eight from the UTPB 19 yard line. Luke Nethercott in at quarterback still for the uh, Mountaineers. He's got three receivers at the top of his screen. Changing the play from the sideline. Looks like tight end Steven Austin He's on the bottom, Macias takes the handoff and he continues to fight forwards, gonna pick up two yards. That's gonna bring Andy down Macias a third and there. six. 44 with the original uh, penetration there. That's Kiwan Grismore, linebacker for the Falcons, got in the backfield there and caused that back to have to change the direction he wanted to go. And I uh, got him down for about a third, looks like in about six. Four point play, possibly. Could be, Nethercott rolls right, fires. It's gonna be incomplete. I think if they see that on film, Clay, they're probably gonna talk to that quarterback about making a back shoulder throw there. Watch, right. watch our replay. If he throws that back shoulder, it's open. That's not where he put the ball, up toward the uh, north end zone. Incomplete. Well, that was a bullet. That had a lot of steam on it, and receiver turned late. So uh, difficult to uh, get your hands up in time. Fonseca, this time a 34-yard attempt. The kick is up, and it is good. So we do have points on the board early here in the second quarter. The Mountaineers lead the Falcons 3 0. The first half. Mountaineers 3, Falcons 0. This scoring summary is brought to you by First Basin. Galope Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com.
Well, the Falcons fall behind three to nothing here early in the second quarter, looking to receive the kickoff and uh, going to have the wind at their back this Taking quarter. The wind we've noticed is uh, blowing out of the northeast uh, most of the time, maybe 10, 15 miles an hour, but it ha has been some gusts of a lot more than that. Yep, see if that Falcon offense can get something going, keep that defense over here where they can make some adjustments. They played very good on about the defense. Their offense has got to help them out now. Yep, they need a little bit of rest. Kick taken there at the five-yard line. Still on his feet. Link fights his way out over the 40. Great return. The Falcons will start with some good field position up at their own 42-yard line. Nice return here, as you can see, our instant replay right there. Good job at switching the ball over to the hand nearest the sideline that he's at. And got up to that 42 for a Falcon first down. Corey Harris has checked into the ball game at the running back position. And we've seen the UTPB do this uh, last week as well. Got receivers two at the bottom, two at the top. Fires it quick to Link. Link, a lot of coverage there, but is going to fight his way out to the 49-yard line. Now they may mark him back at the 48. Little little hook route, stop route in front of the corner down here, playing off soft coverage. Good throw, good catch, and a good gain on first down. It says fourth down, should be second. It should be second. And uh, second and four, a lot more manageable than second and 10. Fake to Harris, fires the ball is complete. All the way out for the Falcon first down, down to the 38 yard line, catch made by uh, Clyde Bello. And he was just in the slot. I think he just hooked up right in the slot there on that little soft zone coverage that Western Colorado's playing there and got the ball up to the 38 for a Falcon first down. And Graham fires and it's going to be caught. Couldn't tell if that was Link. No, that's not Link. Number six. number six, Malik Jackson with the catch. And it's going to be another first down, gain of 13 down to the 25. Watch our instant replay right there. He threw that ball before he came out of the break. Play. Yep. It's I, perfect. I like this. They're getting rid of the ball quick and uh, going to nix that pressure from the Mountaineers. Is this time uh, Graham just fires it for the sideline. And once again, live to fight another day. Got it across the line of scrimmage and out of bounds, so no intentional grounding there. Pressure came off the left side, off the outside, the tack from the tackle position, and uh, forced him to get rid of that football in a hurry there. Well, Graham uh, had a little pocket, but it was very brief, and the coverage was there and did a wise thing. And Save the yards. Graham fires quickly. Mm. Oh, intended for uh, Marcus Molina out there off his hands. Not sure he would have been in bounds, but uh, it's going to be incomplete. So now the Falcons are facing a third and ten. Well, let's see if they can convert here. We're definitely in Carson Roberts' uh, yeah, definitely territory. Within his range, yeah, yes. he kicked a 41-yarder last week that would have been good from Maybe 60. 60 yeah. 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 Oh, the Falcons are going to call a timeout. We'll do the same. So with 12.47 remaining, the Mountaineers lead 3-0.
Well, third down now and 10 for the Falcons as we return. We appreciate you joining us for our uh, Trans Global Production College Football Game of the Week. Graham's got three receivers here at the bottom of your screen. Corey Harris in the backfield with him. Harris did have a couple of catches last week. Throws deep. It's going to be caught. But I believe, oh, they're going to say he got a foot in bounds. I believe that's number six once again, Malik Jackson with a beautiful catch. See it here on the replay. It's the fade route up the side. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Let's see if he gets that down. Oh, I believe he sure so. did. Yes, he did. Great call by the official there. He was right there and a great call. Falcons first and goal from the two. They got to punch it in here, Clay. 23 yards there for Jackson and uh, first and goal for the Falcons. Harris going to go absolutely nowhere as uh, white jerseys ever which way he looked. He's going to lose two back to the four-yard line. Yep, penetration off the left side of the Falcon offensive line is what busted that play up. He had nowhere to go. Talking about uh, Corey Harris and balls back at the four-yard line. See if they run a little play action pass here, Clay. Uh, I would not be surprised. Uh, two tight ends in the ball game, one at H back. Oh. So, timeout Falcons. We'll be back after this. Well, as we return to action here, the Falcons looking at a second and goal from the four-yard line. Two receivers at the bottom of the screen. Here's where you'd like to see maybe a tight end slip out or well, across. You got tight end up the top of the screen, uh, Jeremiah Benson and uh, Brock Johnson also as the pass is intended, I believe, for MJ Link there, but it's going to be incomplete. You could tell if he was going for Link short or going deep. For, uh, I don't know if that was Patterson. I, or I, think, I think somebody ran a, ran a wrong route there, Clay. Somebody did not get in the right spot because that's where Graham thought they were going to be. And they weren't there. Yep, third and four from the four, third and goal, I should say. See if they can get it in here, maybe sneak the H out. Yeah, he is out, and he, it's who he's firing for. Johnson makes the catch. They call it a touchdown. He's on the goal line. Touchdown, Falcons. Well, that's the H slipping out. Watch our uh, instant replay. Just slipped out in the flat from his H position on the right side. That's a great throw and a better catch. He did. By, by number 89 there. Graham put it where either it was going to be incomplete or Johnson was going to make the catch. There was not going to be anybody else involved. Correct. So, touchdown for Brock Johnson. Graham with his third touchdown pass of the season. The kick from Roberts is up over our cameraman Hagen's head. And the Falcons lead 7-3. Uh, this scoring summary is brought to you by First Basin Credit Union. The Falcons scored a four-yard touchdown by number 89, Brock Johnson. Scoring drive took eight plays, 58 total yards, taking 217 off the clock.
Well, for Brock Johnson, second catch of the year, second touchdown catch of the year, two for two. Oh, that's his second tonight. Okay, it's his second touchdown of the year, third reception on the season as the Falcons now lead seven to three. Good job. I'm like you. I like the quick throw, get the ball out of that quarterback's hands, give him a chance to gain some confidence. And that offense finally showed a little continuity there in putting that drive together and getting the lead for the Falcons. Well, that quick, quick drop, quick release has definitely uh, negated the pass rush and the blitzing of the Mountaineers as the return is going to come out over to the 27 yard line, but there is, Wesley nope, the there's a shoe field. on the play, not yeah, a play. So Western Colorado now finds itself behind in the ball game for the first time today. And they're gonna start from their own 26 yard line. Let's see if the Falcon defense can maybe get another three and out, get that ball right back into the, off into the offense's hands. Seems to be a little hot right now. Well, Nethercott still the quarterback for the Mountaineers. Uh-oh. Ball is bounced in, and he is going to get crushed. I believe that's Adesui, first, first Falcon there. And uh, woo. the quarterback's going to have to come off, Clay, because he lost his lost helmet. Lost his helmet, so now maybe we will see uh, Connor Desch, at least for one play. There he comes from... Lost Way back off the bench. <laughs> hey, you're in the game. He Sprint. Not expecting that. Nope. So well, that's going to be a loss of 13 yards all the way back to the 13 yard line. So looking at a second and 23. Once again, the Mountaineers looking uphill. Keep everything in front of you. Get rally and make the tackle. Look for a, maybe a running play here as Dash. Freshly in the ball game, and Macias going to go nowhere again. Great penetration by Donta Stewart to mess it up. Tried the little quick toss to the left side of their formation. Stewart read it, got up the field, took the running back's legs out for a loss on the play back to the eight-yard line. Third and about uh, Andrews, I think. I'm telling you, third and 28, another 28-yard needed for the first down that's twice for the Mountaineers not sure you have a 28 yard play in your playbook look how deep they're playing in the secondary there's, Clay. there's not many of them yeah they're that deep and they are not even as deep as the first down marker oh, oh it's picked yep what a reception coming up with the interception there I believe that's a Ashton levels comes out of nowhere with a diving interception and the Falcons will take over first and goal from the Mountaineer 10-yard line. You get a chance to see that again. Watch our Transglobal Productions instant replay. He just stepped right in front of the wow. receiver there. Tried to run a little five-yard hook route. There it is. Man. He read it. Speed. Made the break and made the play. That's what speed can do for you. Yep. And he read it perfectly. So with 10-16 remaining here in the first half, the Falcons looking at first and goal from the 10-yard line. Corey Harris up the middle. He's going to fight forward for a gain of three on first down. Yep. Not much there inside between the tackles on that first down run. As uh, penetration came in from the Western Colorado defense, they didn't get much of that at all. Second and about and goal from about the eight and a half yard line. Let's see if we receive a little play action pass here on second down. Like to see us get a touchdown and yep. get, us, get us 14 on the board instead of just seven or just three to make it 10. There it is. He's got time to throw. He's going to roll right. Fires in the corner for Link, but uh, the coverage was there. Threw it away. They didn't, bite on that. Seven. they didn't bite on that play action fake at all, did they, Clay? No, they did not. They but uh, good good protection there. Yep. As uh, Graham had time to throw the ball, just not uh, able to uh, – complete it. I'd like to see a little screen here on I, third down. That's what I had talked about early in the uh, ball game. Let's yep. try some kind of middle screen. I, I don't know if this close to the goal line is a good 
place for that or not. But whoa, Harris. Oh, fights his way forward. It's going to be fourth and goal from the two yard line. So, Harris, coach, do you want to uh, 30, take Brady. the points or do you want to go for it? I like taking the points here. I think anytime you can take points and give yourself, uh, in this case, what would be a seven point lead. Looks like the Falcons, though, are not going to listen to Coach Hubbard and take a, take a shot here on fourth and two. Looks like they're going to go for it. And the Falcons are going to have to use their last timeout. As we return to the field here, you see the Falcons setting up fourth and goal from the two-yard line. Corey Harris in the backfield with quarterback Dylan Graham. Three receivers to the top of the screen, tied in. Brock Johnson at the bottom of the line. The snap, and there's the throw, and just a little bit too high. So UTPB comes away with zero points. But they have the Mountaineers backed up deep in their own territory. Yeah, at the two-yard line, they're going to have to go the full 98 to get in down to scoring position. And uh, Well, uh, I will tell you, with the penetration, UTPB's been getting up front. Could, could be looking safety here. Yeah, it's a possibility. And let up. Got to play sound fundamentally de defense-wise, Clay, and Keep them back here and see if you can get another short field to work with, if you can get them three and out and off the field. Nethercott with Macias in the backfield. Got two receivers split wide. Got two tight ends. And he is going to throw it. He's going to air it out. Throwing for, looks like Malik White over there, but it's too far. Good coverage by the Falcons, second and 10. Yeah, they had a corner underneath and a safety coming over the top. Would have had to fit that in perfectly to get it to that wide receiver. Incomplete second. And lot 10 from the two-yard line. So let's see if the Falcons can get a little pressure here. Uh, it's a penetration. I, 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 I mean, I, I don't look for Western uh, Colorado to run the ball here because they've uh, had too many losses in the running game. Once again, it's going for White. Great coverage out there. LeVon Barnett with a beautiful man-to-man -man coverage knocks the ball away, setting up a third and ten. Yep, one-on-one -on -one coverage, as you said. He is running step for step with that receiver. And just at the last moment as the ball got there, put his left hand up, knocked the ball down, uh, forcing an incompletion. And here's another third and 10, third and long for the uh, Mountaineers. Let's see if UTPB's defense can get off the field. Yeah, look up man-to-man uh, -man defense in the dictionary and you'll see that video right there. Yep. Great job by Barnett. Oh, he dropped it. Actually, I think number 30, who we saw with the uh, interception on the last series, Lavelle's, Ashton Lavelle's gets his hand here. Watch on the instrument. I think he just got his hand in there and knocked it loose on the stop route. No pass intended for Victory David there, but it is incomplete. So now from deep in their own territory from the two-yard line, the Mountaineers facing a punting situation. 
So this is one where Nethercott's got to get it off quick. You got to have a really good snap and get it off quick. Don't step that foot on that back white line. He almost Ooh. did. They almost got there. Just about got that. Yep. That is going to go out of bounds probably somewhere between the 20 and 25 yard line. Yep. Out of yep. There it is. 22, 22 yard line. Yep. 20 yard punt, as Larry tells us. Uh, well, the man. Falcons once again have a good shot at uh, picking up some points. Got to convert here. Got to convert. Look how soft they're playing that on the corners, Clay. They are. Just those little quick hitters again. Yep. Whoa. Tried to throw the corner yep. route. Tried to throw the corner route to the slot receiver, Tyson Carter. I believe that's uh, Marcus Molina. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Number seven, Mark, or number, two. Uh, number two, Marcus Molina. And tried to throw the corner route one-on-one, -on -one, just could not hook up there, making it second and ten. A little wide receiver screen, screen coming back to Link. And uh, the Mountaineers just not biting. And he's going to get back. He's actually going to lose a yard back to the 23, set up a third and 11. That was not well executed by the offense at all there. And Western, as you said, just read it, kind of smelled that one out and uh, got it tackled for a really no-yard gain, making it third and 10. I like the little uh, fake of the swing pass out there to uh, Harris. But, yeah, it's kind of got jumbled up on the other side of the field. So No safety in the middle of the field. Nope. Pass is overthrown, intended there for number 88, Ben Patterson. So I believe we'll see Carson Roberts come in and uh, see if he can put three more on the board for the Falcons. And Dylan Graham took a shot from the left side as he threw that ball. Uh, got pressure from the left side of the offensive line, came out on the edge. And boy, did he take a pop when he let that ball go. 40-yard field goal attempt. Roberts good from 41 last week, as we said, no problem. Kick is up. And it is good. So with 7.42 remaining here in the first half, your Falcons now lead 10-3. 7.42 remaining in the first half of play. The Falcons 10, Mountaineers 3. Falcons leading 10 to 3 here with a 10 13, oh, excuse me, 742 remaining in the uh, first half and looking to uh, receive the kickoff. Damien Macias back along with, I believe, that's Malcolm Wesley. That looked like a pass going yep. down the field. <laughs> Taking uh, one yard deep in the end zone, chooses to bring it out. It's going to get out to the 21-yard uh, line. And the Mountaineers, once again, will take over from there. There's the uh, field goal being kicked through by Carson Roberts there. They're blocking up the middle to keep penetration from getting there. And uh, Roberts just punched it right on through at that strong Powerful leg of his and got the Falcons up 10 to 3. So you can't relax if you're the defense now. Got to keep attacking like you've been. 
get this Mountaineer offense off the field, three and out. Redcott fires, and it's actually going to be caught this time. Looks like the tight end. I believe that's going to be number 48, Stephen Austin. 46, excuse me, uh, Nathan Meyer on the catch. And that's going to be a first down out to the 31-yard line for the Mountaineers. Yep, a little half roll to the left. Just squared his shoulders up and threw the ball and got it where it needed to be. Yep, Man. once again. I'm telling you right now. Idesui is just living in the backfield of the Mountaineers. Yeah, he, they are having trouble trying to get Idesui blocked. Uh, when he's at the nose position, they're going to have to do some some adjustments with a center and maybe a guard oh, to make sure. Yeah, he is back there quick. You're exactly right. He is second down now and uh, 14 on the loss of four yards for the Mountaineers. Andrew Montez in motion there. Pass is intended for Kai Emsley, but falls incomplete. Watching out of Sui there, Clay. He just grabbed the center and pulled him away from him <laughs> where he could get back in that backfield again. That center had no idea what just hit him. <laughs> Where'd you go? Where'd you where go? Where did he go? So third and long. Good pressure off the edge for the Falcons. Net Leathercott's going to run. Mm. Leathercott, excuse me, and uh, he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage that's going to bring up a fourth and ten. That's a great series by the Falcon defense to get that uh, stop and get the ball back into the offense's hands with the clock running at 550. Going to force this Mountaineer team to punt the football again. And I believe, yes, it is. That's number 13 back deep. That's Gunnar Absick to receive the punt. Great, uh, great pressure that time coming off the bottom of your screen from uh, Taya Hima and uh, Nethercott is going to get a rolling kick. Falcons just going to get out of the way, and they will take over at their 33-yard line. Not bad field position to start your next drive at 525 left in the half. See if the offense can put a, another drive together and get down and get some more points before the half. Well, this UTPB offense has looked up. Uh, uh, early in the ball game, looked a little rough, but it uh, kind of picked up the pace here as uh, we've gotten into the uh, second quarter and have been able to move the ball downfield some. Like you said, those quick throws and that quick strike offense, those, um, getting the ball out of, out of the quarterback's hands, that's been a good adjustment for them. There it is again. And it's high, but going up and making the catch there is uh, Timothy Wiggins. Going to pick up about four yards on first down. A little stop route over on the far sideline. About ten yards, about five yards on the on the catch there. Going to make it second. Actually, only going to give him four. Second and six. Tilford back into the ball game. He's going to carry the ball out to the 40-yard line. He's going to bring up a third down and a long three for the Falcons. Good. Push off the left side of that line from uh, the center, Orta. Diaz the guard, and Caroline's the tackle to make this third and manageable with about three yards. Yep, intended there for Absec. Oh, a late flag on the play. Let's see what the call is. It's going to be some uh, funny business after the whistle, I believe. Western we'll sideline we is not very happy about that. Here, the official. Gonna move it up. Well, that's probably gonna be 15. Yep. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 65 of the defense. A 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. You can hear the UTPB faithful are happy with that call. They're going to move the ball all the way up to the Mountaineer 45-yard line. Well, both teams now have been bitten by the penalty bug. 
at an inopportune time, so the Falcons able to keep the drive going. Harris back in the backfield. He takes the handoff, and he's, uh-oh, the ball's loose, and it comes up. Going to be returned deep into Falcon territory as he's chased down there uh, by Ben Patterson, but I'm not sure. I believe that's Kendall Lightfoot on the recovery. You're going to see this if we get a chance to look at this. That ball just popped out. Uh, we The ball just popped out of the back's hand straight up into the defender's hands, and he took off down toward the north end of the end zone and got it all the way up to the 15-yard line. That's where Western Colorado will start first and 10. Now, Kendall Lightfoot there on the recovery, number 34, uh, had, nine, uh, had uh, nine tackles and a sack and a half last week. So Nethercott brings him to the line. He's looking in the end zone. He's got a receiver in the corner, and it's caught. Touchdown. As the ball is caught for the touchdown, Kai, Kai Emsley. And uh, the Mountaineers just an extra point away from tying this up. Through the corner route from the slot position. Had one-on-one -on -one coverage back with the uh, UTPB secondary. Uh, Dante Stewart tried to get there, just didn't read it fast enough, put the ball right on the money, and Western Colorado is an extra point away from tying this up. Well, that's Fonseca on to do the kicking for the Mountaineers. And it was ugly, but it went through. Extra so 407 remaining here as the Mountaineers have tied it up 10-10. Scoring update from Lubbock. Final and double overtime. Texas Tech 33. Houston 30. Well, after the uh, 40, we're going to call it about a 43-yard fumble return by Kendall Lightfoot of the Mountaineers. They strike quickly. One play, 15-yard touchdown pass to Kai Emsley from Luke Nethercott and uh, have tied the ball game up at 10. And TPB's got to get the momentum back. And just like we were talking at the break, the switch in momentum, those turnovers will do that in a hurry. The momentum has switched. Got to get it back if you're in black and white and uh, orange here for the, the UT Permian Basin Falcons. They've got to get that, that momentum back, see if they can go down and get some points with 4.07 left before the half. You can, and, and Larry was right. They were talking about trying to strip that ball as that running back came through oh, there. Yeah. yeah, as soon as he the first man hit him, everybody else went for the ball. All right. Uh, take care of that football. So it looks like Harris in the backfield again with Graham. Oh. Looks like they ran out of time. Yep. Delay game. Delay game. Number three of the offense. Five yards. Still first down. Got to have a little more urgency to get to the line of scrimmage, Clay, and take the ball, take that snap. A little sluggish right now. Momentum has changed, as we just said. Graham throws quickly. Oh, tell you what, the cornerback jumped that route and almost 
had a pick six. Yep. Almost is exactly right. I that tried was to, a Darius Gaines. Tried to throw the quick stop out there to the far side, and he, you're right. He read it, tried to get in front of it, and just could not secure the ball. Second and 10 now for the Falcons. Graham got a pocket. He's going to run. He's looking deep. He has Link, but the ball is uh, underthrown, and Link not able to go up and make the catch. Uh, Link definitely had three or four steps on the defensive back, but uh, Graham just not able to get enough on the throw. A lot of hand stuff there. Here's our instant replay. Watch as uh, the quarterback just steps up and tries to Hit Link on the fly and just a little underthrown there. Couldn't complete it, making it second in about 15, sorry, third in 15. Not sure the official call here. Holding. Offense 65. It's a half the distance penalty. Still second down. Oh, that's why? Okay, well. That's why it still says second down over there I'll, on the far sideline. I wondered that. Yep. So they're going to move it back to the uh, eight-yard line, we're going to say. Got to be careful here. No turnovers. Down on this end of the field. Back up against your goal line. So second and uh, showing pressure. 23. Try delay there to Harris, but uh, not able to hold off the, uh, the defense. Ball, and uh, he's going to be pulled down at the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up now third and 23. I see them just running the ball here, and maybe trying to get a little yardage to have some room to punt with. They're bringing pressure. Well, they're not going to here. Did on the uh, last play. They are. Yep. Graham's going to roll out left. He's going to be able to pick up some yardage, going to fight his way forward, dive out around the 19. We're going to give him the, about the 19, 20 yard line. But at bottom line, it's going to be fourth and uh, about 12 and another punting situation for the Falcons. Yep. Going to flip the field here. Got the wind behind them. So Landeros ought to be able to, if they get it protected, get a good foot into it and flip the field here. If Sergio can do that. He's got to execute. Yep. They're bringing pressure. There's eight, six, six, seven guys up on that line of scrimmage, but he did get it away. He did. It'll be about a 42-yard kick and about a six-yard return. And about an eight-yard return. Yep. So and Western's going to set up in good field position here at the 47-yard line of Western Colorado. They have 2.45 left on the clock, and I believe they have all three of their timeouts left in their back pocket. Uh, that's what the scoreboard says. I don't remember them using any, so uh, Nethercott going to come out. I believe we have a different running back now. I did not catch his number before he turned around. We'll get that for you shortly. Definitely a larger running back. 40-something. 3-2. Nethercott fires over the middle. It's caught 40. by number 88. Pass complete to number 88. Tackle that is uh, Dante Stewart. Not on our roster, thank you very much. Gain of six, second down and four. But it was a good catch. Yep, it was. And number 46, Nathan Myers in the backfield for Myers, who has uh, made a catch. He's lined up at H back and tight end also tonight. Nethercott's going to scramble. He's going to slide forward for a Mountaineer first down at the UTPB 41 yard line. Be Game good enough seven. for a first down. First down That's good recognition by Nethercott right there to just not force anything. Take what you can get. You've got plenty of time still. Keep the drive alive. The UTPB defense has got to stay in their lanes and contain the quarterback. Nethercott, once again, time to throw, but uh, oh, hits him right in the hands. The worst place, huh? Yep. And Kyle was, Hemsley does not make the catch. He was looking to turn up field before he, he, he had the ball. Yes, he was. He knew he was open, and he was ready to 
Get a little bit of the rack, the run after catch. Catch it and see that tuck and then go from there. Timeout. Western Colorado takes their first charge timeout of the half. Hey, Bobby. Hey, when he when he when we're gonna go to break and he turns his mic on like that and then stands there for five seconds without saying anything, should I jump in and say it real quick? Okay. Okay, yeah, because golly, he turns it on and then he stands there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, second and 10, a minute 51 on the clock uh, before halftime. Nethercott still would believe that's Myers in the backfield at the running back position. And he's going to take the handoff. He's going to barrel over that left side, and he is a large young man. He fights forward down to the 35-yard line. Going to bring up third and four. DeAndre Robinson watching him come up right here and try to deliver a shot. Like you said, that large guy just kind of bounced off of him and ended up on the ground for a couple yard gain. Going to make this third and about four. Well, Meyer is listed at only six foot, but a solid 225. And he looks every bit of that. Yes, he does. Third and four. Nethercott's got to get rid of the ball. No, he's going to scroll left and is not going to get the first down. Robinson with a great tackle. He came up and read the quarterback rolling this way. See our instant replay right here, our Trans Global Productions instant replay. He thought he was going to be able to get the first down. DeAndre said, uh, not on this play, fella. Came up, took him down for no yard gain, going to be fourth and about four. Mountaineers appear to be going for it. Still 17 seconds on the play clock. Nethercott looking right, fires over the middle, and it's going to be caught with enough yardage for the first down. UTPB trying to strip the ball, not able to do so, I believe. Kai Emsley on the reception. Timeout. And they're going to call a timeout. We'll do the same. Colorado takes their second charge timeout. This is a 30 second timeout. Twenty-eight seconds remaining here in the first half. The Mountaineers have one timeout left. Twenty-eight yards to go, looking to put some more points on board and take the lead. The Falcon defense going to fight furiously to prevent that from happening. Nethercott takes the snap, throws over the middle. Ball is incomplete. Great coverage there by, I believe, Dante Stewart. Once again, tended for Emsley, and it's going to be incomplete. And they brought pressure right up the middle, trying to get to the quarterback there. Almost got there, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Stewart had great position and great leverage to keep that from uh, happening on that pass completion there. Nethercott with time to throw in the pocket, but now he's going to go down. Guess who? Yes. Ida Sui grabs hold of a leg at the bottom of the pile and pulls Nethercott down for a loss all the way back to about the 32-yard line. And that's a great rush by 
Adesui right there to get to the quarterback right in his face, not, in allow, not allowing him to step up into the pocket and throw the ball. Just got him down on the ground. Well, that was a coverage sack as well because he did have a little time to throw. Don't know why the clock has not started as uh, should start. Should have should never, have yeah. I don't understand the reasoning on the clock stopping. Still hasn't started. 18 seconds remaining, though, here in the first half. Third and about 15 for the Mountaineers. Pressure once again, and uh, he gets it away. Don't know if he caught it or not. Nope, they're going to say he did not catch it. Ball hit the turf. Good try there by Andrew Montez, but uh, ball on the turf. So that's going to bring up now a fourth and 15 from the 32. That would be about a 49-yard field goal, which I believe that was uh, Fonseca's long field goal last year is going to be into a little bit of a wind. But I think they're going to give it a shot. And as you saw in our Trans Global Productions instant replay, that ball did bobble and hit the ground as it got to the receiver. And pressure came again from Victor Adesui. He has had an outstanding first half. Yes, he has. He's been almost unblockable. Kick is up. Nope. Just a little bit off to the left, maybe a little bit short. Four seconds remaining on the clock. Uh, I believe the Falcons come out, snap, take a knee, and go to the house. Happy with the 10-10 score. Or what do you think? You want to air it out here, Kyle? No. No? no. Okay. I, look, I agree. Look, look back here. Look on the back end. <laughs> uh, if you're going to beat that coverage, uh, good luck to you because they're almost 40 yards. Yeah. They're definitely going to come out. Graham's going to take, take the snap take a knee and go to the halftime. And that's indeed what happens. So your halftime score of your Transglobal Productions college football game of the week, the UTPP Falcons 10 and the Western Colorado Mountaineers 10. We'll be back after this. Falcon fans, it's time for our Raising Cane's Kick for Chicken Challenge. Tonight we have three, Lily Simmonsall, Dalen Samuel, and Trace Notley. They'll be attempting to kick a 20-yard field goal. The band that kicked the longest field goal will be announced as our Raising Cane's winner. Receive a gift basket provided by Raising Cane's. Just a little short. Was it good? No good. Sorry, no good. It's all up to Trace. It's good. One by Trace Notley, former Falcon. All right, 
crowd give it up for Lily, Dalen, and Trace for trying this today. Congratulations. It's halftime, Falcon fans, and you know what that means. It's time for your very own Spirit of the Permian Basin halftime show. Tonight, the Spirit of the Permian Basin performs music from the movies with our animation celebration. The band begins by engaging the superhero world as they perform the main theme from Disney's animated classic, The Incredible. Down here in the field are over 150 high school band members from seven schools across the West Texas region. As part of their Falcon Band Day experience, these musicians join our Spirit of the Permian Basin to perform Ricky Martin's Live in La Vida Loca and Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. Ladies and gentlemen, please give these students a warm Falcon welcome as they enter the field.
this concludes the Spirit of the Prairie Basin Halftime Show. The band is under the direction of Dr. Brian Brew. Associate Director of Band, Dr. Lindsay Iben. Percussion Instructor, Dr. Kim Pierce. And Feature Twirler Coach, Miss Emily Ann Brito. Six carbs and 95 calories. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Six carbs and 95 calories.
Check one, two. Welcome back to Astound Broadbad Stadium in Midland, Texas for the second half of the Trans Global Productions High uh, College Football Game of the Week. I got to get it together there, folks. Kyle's got some stats for us here and uh, pretty even, pretty much defined the first half. It's as even in the statistic category as it is on the uh, scoreboard right now. Both teams uh, offensively struggling to find some consistency right now. Eight first downs for Western Colorado to five for our Falcons. Uh, the Western Colorado team has minus 22 yards in rushing in the first half. Falcons only have 19. They've got to get a running game going, Clay, and get some, uh, uh, take some pressure off their quarterback, Dylan Graham. Uh, passing yardage in the first half, 79 for both teams. So total offensive yardage in the first half, uh, 57 for the Western Colorado Mountaineers to 98 for UT Permian Basin. I think that would have had to have been an emphasis is getting offense going. Neither team passing the ball very good, 79 yards for both teams in the first half. And as I said, Western Colorado in the negative right now running the ball. The UTPB defense looks entirely different than it did a week ago here. Absolutely. Like Stewart takes the ball. Nope, that's a Robinson. Carries the ball out over the 20-yard line where the Falcons will set up shop first and 10. Let's see if they... Uh, come out maybe with a little more urgency. They're gonna have what little wind is happening now uh, behind their back going from north to south here on the astound Bronband Stadium field. And see if they can get something started and on the board here to begin the first series of the third quarter. Dylan Graham is the quarterback. Corey Harris in the backfield with him. Harris takes the handoff, a pretty good push by the uh, offensive line, but it's going to be a short gain of two, two and a half yards for Harris. This uh, the Western Colorado defensive front has uh, given the UT off, UTPB offensive line fits in the first half. See what adjustments they've made as we continue on through the third quarter here. Graham gets rid of it quick. Ball's caught by Johnson. Fights forward. Going to be just short of what's needed for the first down. Yep, little hook up or out right in the middle of the defense. Good read by Dylan Graham there to get the ball out of his hands. We've got a penalty marker on the play back at about the 12-yard line. Roughing the passer. Oh. Defense, 91. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Wow. Well, that's a big penalty there. 15 added on to the end of the play on roughing the passer from Western Colorado. And that's going to give the Falcons a first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Well, negates the third and short. Johnson in the backfield as the blocking back. Harris takes the ball up the middle again. Going to be another gain of about two, two and a half yards. Hey, Clay, how about a notable alumni 
Ryan here from Western Colorado. Those of you who watch the NFL at home ought to recognize this name. Austin Eckler, the starting running back for the Chargers, was from is from Western Colorado. Second and eight. Graham, once again, a very high snap has to go down. And uh, they that's happened quite a few times tonight. That's something they're really going to have to work on next week. When the snap goes high like that, that generally means the center's uh, standing up, coming up too fast out of his stance and uh, wanting to get into a blocking pattern of some kind. Usually raises their bottom up a little bit. It's what causes that, and that's what happened there. And now if UTPB looking at third and 13. They need to come up with a big play here to keep this drive alive. Snap good this time. Graham, time to throw, gets rid of it. Actually, a couple of guys run into each other. He's going to scramble, but it's going to be far short of what was needed for the first down as he uh, hightails it out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. Yeah, nobody open downfield. That's good coverage on the back end by Western Colorado in their secondary. Nobody open and forcing Dylan Graham to have to use his feet to get what he can and force a punting situation here. Now Landeros out to punt, usually pretty good at pinning teams inside the 20, had several kicks uh, to that effect his last two seasons. So see if he can do that here again. Of course, Landeros did not play last year due to injury. That kick is taken on the 15 yard line, gonna be returned out to about the 28 yard line. I thought I saw a flag come No, I think in. that was a little football on the sideline. Oh, I saw was the it? same thing, yeah. Came flying out of nowhere. Oh, no, they're going to mark that all the way up about 32-yard line, 33 maybe. Yeah, I believe you're right. I thought he called well, for a fair catch back here. Apparently that's I what, think that was a flag. I, maybe it was. Holding. Receiving team, 13. 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Well, so the holding penalty is going to bring the ball back to the 15-yard line of the Western Colorado Mountaineers. They will start their first drive of the third period from that spot. And uh, let's see what they decide to do here. Ball at the 8-yard line. Here we go. First and ten for the Mountaineers. Oh! <laughs> Dante Stewart with the pick and walks it into the end zone for the Falcon touchdown. Watch our replay. Uh oh, wait, 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 wait. There's a little yellow flag on the field. Probably going to be excessive celebration. Stewart just read the short, quick route, the screen, stepped in front of it. And took off, picked it off, ran into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. There is a penalty marker at the 15-yard line. I don't know what that's going to be, but it looks like it's going to. Uh... After the play. Yep. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 30 of the defense. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That is number 30's first UNS. So unsportsmanlike on the celebration after the interception for a touchdown. And here is Carson Roberts to try to add on the extra point and give the Falcons a 17-10 lead. Snap is good, and the kick itself is no good. Unusual as Roberts misses. So you're Time out. 12 29 remaining in the third period. It's the Falcons 16, Mountaineers 10. So 12 29 remaining here in the third quarter. The Falcons lead 16 10. Hey, Bobby. Your attention to the field for another exciting competition. 
Hey, the reason I was wanting a time code there is because the official was standing right next to the huddle of the players and coaches, and there was some really bad language coming through there. I thought you might be able to go and take it off. The team that catches the most footballs into this trash can wins. On your mark. It was. Get set. Go. It, it was. It was after the punt. I got it started at 150, and you'll just have to listen for it. Well, the Falcons' second interception of the night results in a pick six for Donta Stewart, and they lead now 16 to 10 over the Mountaineers. Kickoff is going to be marked back all the way to the 20 yard line due to uh, a penalty on the Falcons. Kick is going to be taken and dropped, picked up again at the 20. Those are dangerous because the coverage kind of outruns it. Tackle actually going to be made by the kicker of the Falcons there, Michael Mayfield. Now, when you get that ball bumbling around like that, a lot of times the kickoff coverage team will relax and not stay in their lanes and allow, as, as you saw right there, Western Colorado to actually get a good return out of it up to their own 47-yard line. Yeah, we're starting. Turn about 28, 29 yards there. They're going to set up in good field position, though, trailing 16 to 10. See if the defense can come up with another big play. Falcon defense has been awesome tonight. Mm. Pass is caught. Did he catch that? I yes, he did. So. Malik White on the reception. Nethercott, I wasn't sure that was Nethercott. He was wearing a brace on his knee in the uh, first half and looked like he took it off, but it's still Nethercott in at quarterback. Yeah, that brace is gone. Brace is gone off the right so. knee. Macias now is going to carry. He finds a hole over that right side. Going to fight forward close to that first down marker. Another big hit for LaVon Barnett. Good job by LaVon to come up and fill the hole. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. They pulled the H from the right side to the left side so he could get a kick out block and then ran right in behind where that H was for a first down. And I'm sorry I pronounced that incorrectly. That's LaVon. Barnett. Going to be a game of only a yard on first down. Going to set the Mountaineers up second and long, second and nine. This Falcon defense really, really looking like a new bunch after last week. Nethercott's going to go to the pressure, and he's going to go down. Yes, who? <laughs> oh, we know he's going to get up and rock the baby. It's Ida Sui with some help in there. Also got pressure from the outside from number yep. 94, that's Dominic Varela, forced him up into the pressure coming from dot number 99 there. Victor Adesui, he made the sack. DeAndre Robinson also on the blitz there. Going to set up a third now and about 14. 
Nethercotch got time to throw, drops it off to Macias in the flat. He loses the ball. I believe the Falcons have it. Believe you're right. That is correct. The ball recovered the ball there the by ball Eric Franco. Mm. Watch our replay here, Clay. He's going to step up, make the little throw out here in the flat, and he just doesn't take care of the ball. Uh, gets knocked out by one of the Falcon defenders, and they do come up with the football turnover number three tonight for Western Colorado. Falcons have the ball first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. Let's see if they take a shot on first down here. Uh, I don't know about that, Coach. The ball be placed at 39 yards. Two high safeties in the middle of the field. Yeah. Corners playing off real soft. Might be a little tough to get deep. Could be tough here. There comes some pressure from the right side, and uh, gain is going to be about Here's two yards game. on first down for uh, Corey Harris. Yep, Jack off the right side. Anderson. Harris went, tried to get a little crease in there, got about two yards on the play. Western defense is pretty tough up front. Now you're talking about taking a shot on that first play. You really trying to take advantage of that momentum. Yeah, and point. the turnover, right. Yep. Graham fakes to Harris, completes the ball out to Link. Going to be up yeah, just about a yard, yard and a half yeah, short of what's needed for yeah. a Falcon first I think this is going to be roughing the passer again, Clay. Oh, yes, it is. Roughing the passer. Defense, 95, 15 from the end of the run. Automatic, first down. Yep. Western Colorado has got to play under control if you're talking to them from their coaching staff uh, standpoint. is They've had two 15-yard penalties for roughing the passer here. That's going to move the ball up to the Western Colorado 37-yard line. And that's a first down for the Falcons. So the Falcons do have the momentum here. Link at the bottom of your screen along with Molina and uh, – once again, Graham just fires and gets it out of the way. Looks a little gimpy out there maybe after that pass. And I'll tell you why that happened, Clay, because they wanted to throw the stop route out here, the little quick pass, and the corner jumped the route. Okay, well. So they didn't have anywhere to go. They wanted to get it out here to link in the flat on the stop, and they just jumped the route. So better to throw it away than live another day. That's right. Throw it to the white shirt. Second and 10 now for the Falcons. Harris up the middle, finds a little hole, but it closes quickly. Going to be a gain of only, well, they're going to mark Harris him at the, the line game. of scrimmage for Jackson no gain. So it's going to be third and 10 now for the Falcons. See what kind of coverage we get here in the secondary. I believe it's going to be a cover four look with the corners and the two safeties off. Going to play some soft coverage out here, so that might, might be a good time for one of those wide receiver tunnel screens of some kind. Well, we shall see. Two receivers at the top of the screen. Harris shoots up the middle quickly, but a good tackle to take his feet out from under him. I Harris believe number seven, Dominic Fletcher. Fletcher. Dawson Reynolds with a good block there, number 65. The Permian grad, 6-3-3-10. Falcons appear to be going for it. Fourth down and six from the Mountaineer 33-yard line. They need to convert, Clay. Link in motion. And that's the way he's looking, and just too much pressure. Graham would have had to have thrown it quickly and not able to do that. He's going to just get smothered back at the 42-yard uh, line where the uh, Mountaineers will take over. Yeah, they brought pressure, as you said. They knew that uh, UTPB was going to try to throw the ball downfield, so they brought more pressure than UTPB had to block and got to the quarterback, bringing turnover on downs, and Western Colorado will start first and 10 from their own. Just shy, ball almost touching the 42-yard line. Once again, defense going to have to really step up for the Falcons. They've done been up to the task so far tonight. See what they do on first down here out of the pistol look. Nethercott's got three receivers at the top of the screen. Going to hand the ball to Macias up the middle for a gain of about two out to the 44-yard line. Macias, the ball game. 
the play in the middle interior of that Falcon defensive line, and we've got a injury timeout on the field. We'll be back to a Stan Broadband Stadium after this. Time out. Six carbs and 95 calories. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Second down and ten, uh, eight, excuse me, for the Mountaineers from their own 46-yard line. Falcons have put a lot of pressure on Nethercott. Not as much this time. He's able to complete the pass for a gain out to the 48-yard line, but it's going to be about four yards short of what's needed for a first down. Good pressure, good from the outside there. Almost got him, got to him, but uh, give their quarterback credit for stepping up in the pocket, delivering the ball, and making this third and four. Nethercott looks over the situation. Looks like got man coverage up at the top of the screen. He rolls right. The ball is caught. Nope, it's dropped. I believe right there that uh, Lavon Barnett able to get a hand on the ball and knock it down. You see on the replay here. A little half roll up over toward their sideline. And uh, he just did a good job of getting his hands in there and keeping the receiver from yep. catching the football. And going to force Western Colorado to punt the football one more time. They had the receiver behind him, but I'm sure he read his eyes and knew when the ball was fixing to arrive and able to get his hand up and knock it loose. Nethercott on to do the punting. Nice spiral. Absec's going to take it as a fair catch back at the 12 yard line. So defense does their job, holds and gets off the field. Offense now will start as Clay said from their own 12 with 7.02 left in the third quarter. So the Falcons need to uh, need to get the ball moving a little bit again. Kind of sluggish here to start the second half, much like they were to start the ball game. Graham back in uh, with Corey Harris. Got tied in, checked into the ball game. Jeremiah Benson. Corey Harris over the left side this time is going to pick up a nice yardage on first down all the way out to the 18-yard line. Good, side, good job by the left side of that UT Permian Basin offensive line. 
And here they go, Temple no tempo no huddle on second down. Harris again quickly moving his feet, very quickly, still on his feet. Harris out over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. First down, Falcons. Some nice running from Corey Harris. Yeah, that's a good job of keeping his feet moving and finding open daylight to run to. And once he got away from the initial hit and the initial pressure, got outside and got out of bounds at the 31 for a Falcon first down. Well, big game for the Falcons there. Checking into the ball game at the running back spot now is number 47, Jacob Olivares. And uh, he's going to get a couple of yards. For, yeah, about two yards. Yeah, not much there on the left side that time as the Western Colorado defense shut that down. I believe for Olivares, his first carries of the year. Indeed. So second and eight. Graham quickly out to number 88. It's going to be caught. Ben Patterson, and he has enough for another Falcon first down at the 44-yard line. Saw him at the top of the screen on the beginning of the replay there. Just went up and did a little quick out and got, got, got the catch, got a foot down for a first down. Well, Graham time to throw, and he's on the money. Olivares once again up the middle, a little bigger push from the offensive line as he's going to work his way out to around the 48-49. So a good mix of run and pass right now oh, for the... And another lost helmet. Oh, yeah, he's going to have to come out for a play. Yep. Harris back into the ball game. It's going to be a gain of five out to the 49. To bring up a second down and five for the Falcons as the uh, offense starting to move the ball. Graham hands to Harris. Harris once again working methodically, moving his feet. He's going to get into Mountaineer territory down to about the 48-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and two. Oh, these are tough. I don't think he got it, Clay. I think he got hit right in the Here's hole, the maybe for a one-yard gain. Yep. Be interesting to see what Coach Kerrigan wants to do here on fourth and one. We've seen him go for it already once tonight. See if he's going to try to run tempo and go again. Looks like they Looks are like going to go, yep. Looks like he is. Try and draw them off sides. Nope. Graham back. Going to throw it quickly. Ball is incomplete. Well, I tell you, you had Patterson out there, but uh, ball just a little off target. And so, with the incompletion, the Mountaineers will take over in good field position at their own 47-yard line. Yep. Tried the quick out over on the far side. And the uh, defense... Had that covered, nowhere to go with the ball, threw it out where only his receiver could have a shot at it. Did not get the completion, and it's a turnover on downs. Well, leaning heavily on this defense again. The, the Falcons do move the ball downfield, but unable to convert on that fourth down. And Nethercott's going to bring the uh, Mountaineers back up. Uh -huh. Oh, no way, no way. Adesui on the bottom. Didn't catch on the top. You'll see it on the replay on the top. Well, going to be a loss of three. Adesui was there along with number 44 for the uh, Falcons. Uh, that is Kiwan Grismore helping to make the play for about a three-yard loss. Second and 13, Nethercott swings it out quickly. Nice tackle out there. DeAndre Robinson takes the feet out from under the receiver. I believe that was 83, Daniel Parsick on the catch, but it's going to be a gain of only one, third down and 12. Yeah, and he just ran a quick out, and DeAndre made the, made the play, as you said. Took the legs out, third and 12. See if the Falcon defense can get off the field. Nethercott in the pocket. Fires over the middle. The ball is caught. I believe Malik White is going to fight his way forward to the 34, 33-yard line. 
Big first down for the Mountaineers. Deep in route in the zone into the open area. As you can see him coming across from the top of the screen right into the middle of the field. And a good throw, good catch right on time for a first down. Sure. Yeah, I'm not no. sure why we're not playing football here. Yeah. 22 yard, uh, 22 yards on the pass and catch from Nethercott to White, and uh, first down at the uh, Falcon 33 yard line. Nethercott once again is going to swing this ball out to Myers, and he is down to the 20 yard line for another Mountaineer first down. like we got a player down we'll take a break here the Falcons leading 16 10 we'll be back it'll be first in two for the Mountaineers ball the Falcons I've got to watch the monitor all right welcome back to uh the Stown broadband Stadium, first and 10. Oh, snap is fumbled. Nethercott comes up and fires, and it's going to be caught for the Mountaineer touchdown. On the there is a flag on the play, so we'll see if that's going to be offense. Offside, number 97, the defense. That penalty will be de declined. The score is good. So with that pass and catch touchdown, the Mountaineers have tied the score with the extra point here, can give them the lead with two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Fonseca on to do the kicking. He's uh, missed two field goals tonight, but was good on his only extra point attempt. That is up and it is good. So with 232 remaining here in the third quarter, the Mountaineers now lead the Falcons by one. Say it again. Yeah, when you're starting to tell me the number, it's breaking up. Got it. Well, a five-play drive of 53 yards in a minute and 43 seconds has the Mountaineers back on top by one over your UTP Falcons. UTPV Falcons, excuse me. See if we can get some yardage, some uh, field position to work with here, get the offense going. Well, we've seen glimpses, but it has struggled early in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Looks like they've got it straightened out a little bit now. That kick's going to be taken in the end zone by Link. And uh, the Falcons will start at their own 25-yard line. The end zone for a touchdown. See if they can get something going here, as you just said. And uh, they still have uh, what little wind. It's not quite as bad as it was, as you said earlier in the ball game, but it is going for, uh, the wind is blowing from north to south. To the back of the uh, Falcons right now, so they need to take advantage of it for the last 231 of the third quarter. Harris in the backfield. He takes the ball up the middle again. Going to pick up two, maybe three yards. Yeah, it looks like three on first down out to the 28. Harris, the ball carrier. And they're playing so soft in the secondary on first down, Clay. They're not going to give in, give uh, the receivers any chance of getting behind them on first down 
And they're stopping the run right now yep. as well. Yep, Harris is going to pick up two, but that's going to leave the uh, Falcons a third and five. Harris the ball game. Tackle made by Ian Luna. The game is two. So third and five now, clock inside of two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Falcons need to pick up one here and uh, give their defense a little bit more rest. Oh. Mm. Tried the little quick. Yep, tried the quick hitter there to uh, Leva. And uh, ball was in the air a long time on the deflection or the bounce. Good thing it hits the turf. Falcons three and out. We'll have to punt the football. And Daros is going to have to get his leg into it and see if he can flip the field. They're deep guy about the 30-yard line of Western Colorado. Yeah, he's every bit of 40 yards deep, so a lot of respect for Landeros. Uh-oh, somebody got a piece of it. They did. They and finally, that is. Finally got a piece of it, Clay, coming yep. off the edge. Ball rolls out at the 35-yard line. So special teams for the Mountaineers. Going to start them off in good field position at the 35-yard line with a minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Oh, those special teams, a third part of the game that you have to take care of to win football games, offense, defense, and special teams. And that's what came up big for Western Colorado there is they get a hand on the punt, and it's going to be spotted at the Falcon 35-yard line, first and 10. Yep, that does not help Landero Savage. Larry's correct. That's a five-yard kick. So Nethercott brings the Mountaineers up. And ball is handed off to Myers. He goes left, going to pick up about two, maybe three yards before he's tripped up there by Robinson. Good job by Robinson to fill on the outside lane there. Take the running back's legs out, or he might have had about five or six more yards off the left side. Nethercott looks to the sideline for the call. Changing the play over yeah, there. Still got 13 seconds on the play clock. No hurry. He's going to keep it as a read, and... Uh, He's inside the 10, inside the five, going to be dragged down at the two-yard line. Big run by Nethercott, 30 yards all the way down to the two. First and goal, Mountaineer. That's the zone read, Clay, reading the defensive end who crashed down on the running back. That's why the quarterback pulled the ball, got back outside and found a lane to run through. And as he worked his way across the field toward the near sideline, got out of bounds all the way down to the Falcon two-yard line, first and goal for the Western Colorado Mountaineers. All right, play clock just now starting, so Mountaineers have plenty of time. They're going to come back three receivers uh, to the right of Nethercott. Tied in on the left side. Myers once again in the backfield. He will not take the handoff as Nethercott fools everyone, including me, and walks it into the end zone for the Mountaineer touchdown. The zone read to the other side did the same thing. We're at the defensive end who crashed down, try to stop the inside run. That's why Nethercott just pulled the ball. As you can see there on the instant replay, read the end man on the line of scrimmage who caved down, pulled the ball, and went back around the left side for a Western touchdown. Fonseca on for the extra point. Snap is good. The kick as well is good. So with 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the Mountaineers now lead the Falcons by eight, 24-16. This scoring survey brought to you by First Base and Credit Union. The Mountaineers scored a two-yard touchdown by number 16, Luke Nethercott. Scoring drive took four plays, 35 total yards, missing a minute and four seconds off the clock.
Ready. Well, a short three-play, 35-yard drive in a minute and four seconds for the Mountaineers and uh, is giving them an eight-point lead over the Falcons here with 27 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Mountaineers now to kick off. And it's, we're going to see right now if the UTPB offense can answer, Clay. I believe it's imperative that they have to get a drive going and answer that touchdown by Western right now. No, nope. the kick is in the end zone, yep. and so the Falcons will take over again at the 25. Football is yep. the end zone for a touchdown. Falcon offense has got to come through here. I believe it's time for them to answer and see if they can get back down and get this within a one-score game or, uh, I'm sorry, a one-point game or maybe even tied up and get in the end zone and get a two-point conversion. Well, do you come out running again or do you come out firing? Well, I, I don't think you have to get too far away from your game plan. If you get the read you want to see on first down with a run, you take the run and play, take what you can get, but uh, you cannot Cannot execute here and not ha get something on first down. Mm. Ball is intended for uh, Jackson. Did he pick it? I don't know the call. Yes. He did. Yes, he did. Now they tried to throw the quick out up to the top side or far side of the field. Watch our replay. Ball just hung up a little bit. The corner jumped the route and stepped right in front of the Falcon receiver for a interception got a foot inbounds and western has the ball again at the falcon 33 yard line well darius Gaines, a six foot two senior from silmar california with the big interception and the turnover set them up with a first down at the uh, falcon 33 as kyle said let's see if we get that zone read look again that they've hurt the falcons with the last two times Yep, they did. They ran it, but they did give the ball there. I believe that's Macias back in the ball he game the ball at the game. running back. Going to pick up about three yards on first down. Right off the left side, got good blocking. And uh, got up to the 30-yard line, gain of about three, almost four. That's going to be the end of the third quarter here at a Stown Broadband Stadium in Midland. The Mountaineers lead the Falcons 24-16. We'll be back for the fourth quarter. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. I don't care what kind of stories that's been told on you. That may be a lot of things in life you used to do. Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. Six carbs and 95 calories. All right, fourth quarter football. The Falcons trailing by eight. Defense trying to pick it up. Second down now and seven for the Mountaineers from the Falcon 30-yard line. Defense has to hold here. Macias. Nope. Nethercott's going to keep it around the right side on that zone read again. He's going to fight forward. I believe he's going to have just enough 
for the Mountaineer first down, and he does. You can see he also had a pulling. Yeah, had a blocker. Had a blocker out there. I believe that's the H coming around from the far side to the near side. Once he pulled the ball, he had a lead blocker around the right side and got up to the Falcon 23 for a first down. And that was number 46, Nathan Meyer. He lined up at tight end now. Right. Another caught, rolls left, throws. Mm -hmm. Ball is going to be caught, actually. Macias, I believe, on the catch and is going to net about three yards. See a little half roll here to the left. That was a guy he actually yep. faked to. Watch these two guys hit right there. Yeah. Emsley actually on the catch. On the field for yep. So it's only going to be a game. They're going to give him only two yards there. Yep. As they have second and eight. Let's give you a little more info there while we get a player off the field from Western. They've got 171 faculty members. 75 of them are considered full-time, and they compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference in Division II of the NCAA level. Second down now and eight for the Mountaineers. Got press coverage there at the bottom of the screen. Move strength right here for sure. Nethercott rolls that way, fires into the end zone. Ball is overthrown. So that's going to bring up now a third and eight. That's good coverage on the in the secondary. I believe that's number 38, or is that 39? I can't tell. Now it's 30, actually. Number 30 for the Falcons in coverage there was step for step. That's Ashton Lavelle's. Yeah, had an interception back yep. in the first half. Yes, he did. Big interception. He was right where he needed to be there on that corner route. Nethercott got time. He's in the pocket, he's flushed out, and he's going to go down. Oh, they're going to say it's a fumble. Nope, they're going to say the ground caused it. Uh, Boy, that was a, that had six points written all over it. And a momentum changer. That would have been huge, but still a big play for the Falcon defense. Here you see on the replay. Tell you what's what's great about that. Watch the effort by number 35 right there. He oh. actually got blocked and still kept on coming around the edge and took the quarterback's legs out and got him down on the ground at the 30-yard line. Eric Franco there with the sack, looking now at a 46-yard uh, field goal attempt. Fonseca not good from this uh, 47 yards. Kick is up, and it is again no good as he misses left. And so the Falcon defense holds after the turnover and will take over at their own 30-yard line. That's a big stop by the Falcon defense, as you said. That's absolutely correct. Now maybe a little momentum wearing black and orange right now. And the offense has to take that momentum and put a drive together uh, with 13.06 left in the ball game. Well, looks like Ole Olivares is going to check into the ball game at uh, running back with Graham in the backfield. Graham, pocket collapses quickly is a lot of pressure from that uh, top side. And uh, Graham is gonna go down for a loss all the way back to the 24 yard line. Watch the, watch the edge rush come right there off the right side. And UTPB did not get it blocked on that side of the offensive line. And the uh, quarterback, Dylan Graham, had no time to find the find a, a receiver to get the ball to. Graham once again has a little more time, fires over the middle, and uh, it's going to be incomplete. I think uh, Brock Johnson ready to turn and go before he secured the ball. And that's going to leave the Falcons now in a deep third and 16. I'm not sure. I don't know if you have a third and 16 play in your arsenal right now but they're going to have to try to find one here and keep this drive going well the key is you probably do but the quarterback's got to have time yep. to throw the ball to yep. deliver offensive line has got to give him here comes pressure he oh, goes up the boy, top there was some uh, there was some jersey there 
as uh, Link uh, had his man beat over the outside shoulder, but ball is thrown incomplete, so the Falcons will punt the ball away. Had one-on-one -on -one coverage down here, as you said, with Link and the defender, but just couldn't get him the football, and Landeros is going to have to try to punt the ball and give a UTPB some field position here. Well, key here is give him time to get the kickoff. That's right. The last one was partially blocked. Yep, ended up in a net five-yard punt and almost got it again. Landeros does get it away and gets a very, very, very favorable bounce. And the ball will roll all the way down to the 26-yard line. Is that a 50? The ball be down at the 26-yard line. 50-yard punt. 50-yard punt. And as he said, first, first down for the... Game for the Mountaineers. Speaking of Western Colorado, they have 171 faculty members. 75 of those are considered full-time employees on the faculty staff. And uh, as I told you, they are in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. They compete in 11 sports at Western Colorado. And um, their uh, facilities are very good out on the Western Plains of Colorado. And they have the ball ready to go here on first down. Another caught with uh, Macias in the backfield. No, that's Meyer in the backfield. He takes the ball over the left side, and the scrum's going to move it forward to about the 27, I believe. They try and pull that ball out in there. The UTPB yeah, defense well, is. Why well, you got that guy held stood up? Why not? I'll get a couple of yards out of it. Not much. Second and nine now for the Mountaineers. Clock now, not a concern yet, but will become one before long. 11.40 remaining here in the ball game. Well, a turnover would be nice because they've got three tonight. They do. Turnover would be nice and see if they could get the ball back on a short field somehow. Changing the play from the sideline. Play clock down to three seconds, and so Western Colorado will take a timeout. We'll do the same. Western Colorado takes their first charge timeout. Consider their options. Ultra, two point six carbs and ninety five calories. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Second and nine for the Mountaineers as we return. 11-21 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Mountaineers with the uh, eight-point lead, 24-16. Little shift up front. Macias in the backfield with Nethercott. Nethercott, little option action going around left. Fools no one. 
as I believe Donta Stewart comes up and takes Macias down. Flag on the play. I don't know why you would flip the strength and then run it away from where you just put the strength at to the short side of the field. Also, there was nowhere to run that option play at all. Get the call here from the official. Personal foul, face mask. Number two of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic, first down. That's a huge penalty, Clay. They that just, hurts. Yes, it does. That but hurts because they had them pinned back. Looking at third and long. Mm -hmm. That spot will be enforced from the previous spot. So now first and uh, 10 from the 42-yard line. First and 10, ball at the 42-yard line. A new set of downs. Nethercott's got three receivers bunched together at the bottom of the screen, but he's going to hand off to Macias. And Macias going to try and break from a tackle, not able to do it, and pick up two yards on first down. Good job on that side of the defensive front, or right side of the Falcon defense, to plug that hole and keep that back from squirting through and uh, uh, getting more yardage than he did. Only got about a yard, maybe two, be second down. Bunch trips down here to the right. Right. Once again, they did ran it last play. This time, Macias is going to come this way, and he breaks for a lot of green. He's going to get the ball into Falcon territory, but be about a yard short of the first down. Off the right side, just Jackson pinned it in. Four. Caved it in, I should say, as we've got a player slow to get up, but he is making his way to the sidelines. So we'll keep it right here. And here's a big, it's third and one for the Western Colorado Mountaineers. Boy, if they could, defense could come up with a stop here uh, at this point, get the offense back on the field. It's again, the clock inside of 10 minutes. As you can see it on your screen there, 940. Play clock inside of 20. Nedicott has the call. He's going to keep it on the read and actually is going to fight forward and do it on his own as he gets just enough yardage for the first down plus one down to the 47-yard line. Zone read. UTPB actually read it. Watch here on our replay. But just couldn't get him right there and allowed him to get up the field for a Mountaineer first down. Yeah, Grismore was there, just not able to get hold of him enough of the Nethercott to pull him down. And kudos to Nethercott. He had the strength to stay up and uh, get that aforementioned first down. Macias up the middle. Going to be a gain of about three out to the uh, down to the 44-yard line. Going to have a player lose a helmet. He's going to have to come off for a play. Two of them. Yep. Double whammy. So second and seven now for the Mountaineers. They're certainly in no hurry as the clock does favor them. With the eight-point lead, though, only a one-score lead. Falcons need a turnover. Need something big to happen here. Nethercott keeps it on the read, and this time he gets another first down all the way down to the uh, 36, 37-yard line. No, they're going to mark him back at the 38, which is going to be short. That's where he started the slide. Yep. I just... So another third and one situation, much like they had just a moment ago. Watch here on our replay. You see right here he's going to start his slide right there. Looked like the Falcons kind of uh, ran into each other a little yep. bit there, negated each other with the help of a block. Yep. So third and a yard. Nethercott going to run that option, and it is not going to be successful. 
Well, Macias fights forward. Uh, it's just going to depend on the mark. I think he only got back to the line of scrimmage. Speed option to the near side. Missed a tackle right there, but good pursuit from the inside, from the nose. Vernon Henderson came up and put a pretty good hit on him. Good. So it's going to be fourth and one. Good pursuit. You're going to, you can sure bet that Western Colorado is going to go for it here. Boy, this could be a momentum changer. They got Nethercott's going to take the snap under center first time tonight. So we'll see if they just try and bullet it forward with that quarterback sneak. Well, hand off to Macias, and he is going to be close. It's going to depend on the mark. Mm. I think he's going to just barely get it, Clay. Well, we'll see as the officials pull him up off the uh, – pull it up off the turf. Uh, the official across the way looks like he has it marked just as – just enough for a first down, so I believe they do have it. Yes, I do. Gain of one on the plate. Boy, barely. Maybe First by the down. length of the football. So a new set of downs for the Mountaineers. Clock now inside of 640. And uh, Falcon defense going to have to step up big. They've done it all night. Let's see if they can do it again. Myers over the left side, going to get about two yards down to the 35. I think we talked about this in one of our breaks, Clay, but uh, right now they are, I'm talking about Western Colorado, just kind of wearing down this UTPB Falcon defense right now. They are play, have played hard. They have played much better than they certainly did last week at this time, but they are kind of getting pounded on right now. And they've got to somehow dig deep and try to make a, uh, a stand here, get that ball back to the offense. Second and eight from the 35 of UT Permian Basin. Nethercott hands off and once again to Myers. He's going to fall forward for another two-yard gain. But instead of third and one, it's going to be third and six. Ball at the 33-yard line, UTPB rotating, defensive lineman, trying to keep them fresh. Fresh legs on the field. Third, third and six or seven, let's see if I can get off the field here. Probably two down territory. Oh my goodness. Well, that's going to uh, make it now third and two, I believe, unless he was drawn off. That was the nose just bucking the center back. I think you're right. I think that's going to be on the Falcons. Officials talking about it in there. Yep. Offside. Offside. Defense, 97. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. So now it's third, about one and a half again. And, uh, yeah, they're going to take the snap under Cinder, it looks like. Handed the ball off to Macias from this set last time. Nope, he fumbled, fumbled it. He yeah. falls on it, but it's going to be a loss back all the way to the 30-yard line. So now it's going to set up a fourth down and about three and a half yards. So that makes it a little different. Nethercott just heard the footsteps coming on the blitz. I think he got a little happy feet and got out of there a little too quick. They're going to try Fonseca again. He's 0 for 2 going this way on field goals tonight. This one's going to be also about a 47-yarder. He's missed uh, from close to that twice. But this would make it a two-score game should he connect. Now it's going to be it's going to be off. It's left again, a little bit short. So the Falcon defense once again keeps the offense in the game. Four minutes and one second, and eight points behind the UTPB. Offense, time to go. 
Beautiful shot of the moon there. Yep. Beautiful. Coming up over the southeastern uh, hemisphere over there on the horizon. And what did we say? There was a bad, what did the song say? There's a bad moon There's rising. A bad moon rising. Yep. Yeah. And the it Mountaineers says. did not score there, but took about a little over eight minutes off the clock. Oh, oh the ball is caught. Yeah. Graham puts it in beautifully, caught there by Timothy Wiggins for a big Falcon first down. Deep in route in the zone. Good protection by the line, and the quarterback just stepped up and delivered the ball. Nope. Nowhere to go for Harris. He breaks that first tackle, but Harris just nowhere to go. 27 yard, 23 yards, excuse me, on that pass from Graham to Wiggins. No gain there for Harris, so second down no gain on the play. and 10. Soft coverage up at the top of the screen. Here comes a blitz. Graham. He's got to throw the football. Yeah, he's got to get rid of that one way or the other. Uh, another coverage sack there, I would say, back to the 46-yard line. Going to be a loss of seven and set the Falcons up now third and about 16. Yeah, they just got beat on the right side. The offensive line did. They uh, bull rushed them to the outside gaps and got into the backfield. And uh, Dylan's got to feel that and get rid of the football and not take that sack there. Here comes a blitz again. Yep, good uh -oh. pass, good catch. Down inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line goes uh, Marcus Molina and a big pass and catch for the first down for the Falcons. Yep, brought a blitz right up the middle, read the blitz fine, and got the ball into that area of the field where it came from. Time out. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Six carbs and 95 calories. Two thirty-eight remaining here in the ball game. Falcons trailing by eight on the march down to the 25-yard line after the 29-yard pass from Graham to Molina. Corey Harris in the background. Clyde Bellow in motion. Graham's going to roll right. He's got a lot of green. He fires. And the ball is incom no, it's incomplete. Intended out there, I believe, for Wiggins. And uh, he's not able to come up with it. So it's going to bring up a second and 10 so, for the Falcons. It's a good job by Graham to try to keep the play going. We got a penalty on the play. Looks like we got a penalty somewhere on the play. We do. See what the call is from yep. our head referee. They're still trying to figure out who did what. Kind of Tom Fullery took place. Yeah, they're moving the other way. Yeah, they are. So this is a break. 
Holding. Defense, number 25. 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. So that's one of the deep, it's one of the defensive backs holding on a receiver trying to get open. That's gonna keep the drive going with an automatic first down from the Western Colorado 16 yard line. All right, Graham throws the ball to Link and he makes the catch, touchdown Falcons. Finally got one-on-one -on -one coverage down here, Clay, through the fade route to the back corner of the end zone. Watch the replay. Well, he laid it right in there perfectly. Good concentration by Link. Got two feet down. And now you go for the two to try to tie the ball game up. 223 remaining in the game. UTPB does have all three timeouts remaining. So convert here. If you don't convert here, you still go in half. Have a shot if you can stop the Mountaineer offense. But a lot easier just to convert here. Link in motion. They fake it to him. They're going to throw back this side to Johnson. He makes the catch, a brute strength catch, as he just takes the ball away from the defensive player. And what set this up, Clay, was the half roll to the right to get the defense thinking they're going that way. Uh, they ran this play last year with Zubiate, I believe, in a game over here in overtime. Did the exact same thing, got him open on the far, this near side, and he is, just like you said, went up and got it for the two-point conversion, and we're tied at 24. 2.23 remaining in the ball game. We'll be back to a stand broadband after this. High ball game as we come back. I believe we're going to see the replay of that extra point again. Here it is. He's going to half roll to the right. You can see the tight end over here. He was over on the on the right side, and he just slipped over here to the near side and went up and got the ball on the throw from the quarterback to get the two-point conversion. Now Brock Johnson using some strength there to secure that ball. Now the Falcons will kick off and put the game in the hands of the defense. And they have three timeouts in their back pocket. I'm talking about our Falcons. Mountaineers have two timeouts. So it's gonna come down to their offense against our defense. If we can stop them, get the ball back, maybe one more time. Yep, that's gonna go into the end zone. So the Mountaineers will take over with that two minutes and 23 Ball seconds at their own 25. Defense needs to respond. Let's see what happens here. My goodness, we got a nail biter well, here. Been close, been close. Really all game. All night, nobody's been more than one score ahead all night. So it's not a surprise that we end up at this point with the two minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the ball game. And this probably tells you just how two evenly matched these teams probably are with the way it's turned out here with 223 left in the ball game. Heather Koch got two receivers top and bottom snap is low, but he's able to procure it and fires for a back gain of about seven, eight yards. I believe that's caught by Emsley, number 11. Yeah, the out route to the far side of the field, one-on-one -on -one coverage with number 30 for the Falcons. Uh, that's Lavelle's over there. Got him out of bounds for about a five-yard gain. He's got time to throw. Pocket starts to break down. He fires. I don't know if they're saying he caught it. Pass nope. incomplete. Incomplete. So it's going to bring up third and five now. The Mountaineers really need a first down here. If the Falcons can get a stop, there's two minutes remaining on the clock. They'll call a timeout if they get a stop here unless the clock stops because of a play result. 
Gonna bring pressure maybe from the inside slot. Nope. nope. Ball is incomplete. Mm. Intended out there for number 12, Andrew Montez, but uh, letting just too much. So that's gonna bring up fourth down and the Mountaineers will have to punt the ball away. So UTPB will have three timeouts and about probably a minute 45 left. Last drive was a five play 70 yard drive of a minute 38. So obviously time to uh, pull it off. Make sure you secure yes. the, the ball here. Either that or almost just say, don't even put anybody deep. Tell you they, oh, they're they gonna, gonna call, call that, one. but yep. he was blocked, but Hurt. Looked like he was blocked. It's going to be a running into, but that will still be enough for the five yards. It'll be a first down. A good acting job by Nethercott as he came down on a Falcon defender. Looked like he was blocked into it, but uh, the call, there is a flag. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense number 40. 15 yards, automatic first down. Wow. Well, they're going to call that the 15 yarder for the first down. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not down there, so it's hard to see. But uh, I could see a running into, although I believe he was That would have been a first down anyway. Yeah, it would have been a first down anyway. So now the Mountaineers with new life, but Nethercott still down on the field. Maybe a tweak something, maybe twisted something. And uh, that'll be a difficult spot for uh, Connor D Dash to come in, but he was the starter last year and uh, had over 2,200 yards, 2,300 yards passing, had 22 touchdown passes. So uh, he can do the job. He can do the job. He's done the job. So I'm sure the coaching staff and the players there on the field have all the confidence in Connor Dash. This UTPB defense has stood up all night and uh, going to need to do so again here. And with uh, the uh, improved field position, uh, you would have to think that maybe one of their thoughts, their train of thoughts I'm talking about for Western Colorado is just work down and get it to where if they had to maybe get a field goal, although they've had trouble in the field goal department tonight. They have, especially this direction, 0 for 3. Yeah. Well, let's take a break, and we'll be back to a stay on broadband at a tie ball game after this. Minute 44 to go in the fourth quarter, a tie ball game between the Falcons and the Mountaineers. The Mountaineers with a first down from the 46-yard uh, line. And once again, the Falcon defense going to have to step up. Connor Dash into the ball game at the quarterback position. Hands the ball to Meyer up the middle, going to be a gain of maybe two. Meyer, the ball carrying about using your timeouts if you're either team right now. That's an well, interesting thought. You know, UTPB wants to make sure they're going to get the ball back. They don't want to give the Mountaineers more time. Do you want some time on the clock if that possibility happens? A lot of pressure. Dash able to get it off to Meyer, but Robinson, great one-on-one -on -one tackle. 
And now the timeout's going to come from UTPB. So we will break as well. We'll be back after this. UTPB takes their second charge timeout. This is a 30 second chime now. Out. Correction, that is their first timeout. As we return to uh, a Stown Broadband Stadium here in Midland, Texas. Gain of three on the play brings up third. Third and seven. Down. Looking at the Mountaineers, a minute five left. Both teams with two timeouts left here. You feel like if uh, they don't pick it up, UTPB is going to burn another one. Connor get Dash. Off the field. Yep, sorry. Connor Dash into the ball game at quarterback as uh, Nethercott uh, shaking up on that. Uh, Punt, running into the kicker. Dash fires over the middle, and it's going to be caught for a first down all the way to the UTPB 35-yard line. Catch made out there by number 12, Andrew Montez. They tried to hit the quick slant to the receiver that caught the ball. He just kept working across the field into an open area for a catch and a first down. So quickly up to the line, clock at 44 seconds and running. Dash takes the snap. He's looking deep, and he's going to throw. Ball is broke. Almost caught on the deflection, I believe, but broken up. So it's going to be incomplete. Going to bring up a second and 10 with 33 seconds remaining. Good coverage on the back end there. Uh, on the far side, as you can see, our instant replay. I thought we had a shot at an interception, but you're right. He almost caught it on the on the. Uh, Deflection there. Well, super coverage out there. Antoine Tanner on the coverage. And uh, timeout on the field. now the Mountaineers are going to take a timeout and we'll do the same. Well, that was my mistake. The Mountaineers did not take a timeout. We had a player shaking up on the field, but he is uh, limp to the sideline now. And uh, I believe it's probably just cramp related. But uh, second and 10 now for the Mountaineers from the 35 yard line. Dash in in incidentally uh, looks like he wears gloves. Yep. And I've seen quarterbacks do that in the past. Oh, he's going to hand it off to Meyer up the middle. He's going to fight forward for a gain of about three. Take the Meyer, the ball carrying. Down to the 32-yard uh, line. Now the Mountaineers will take a timeout. Timeout. Western Colorado takes their second charge timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. I'm sorry, Bobby. No, it's not either. Yeah. Right. Well, and I'm trying my best to beat this official because he'll turn his mic on and then he won't speak for five or six seconds and then he speaks for seven or eight seconds. So He must, he must be running for office. <laughs> He's paid by the word, by the, by the time on mic. So another third down for the Mountaineers. They've been able to convert on more than one occasion this drive. Third and seven. Field goal from this spot on the field would be about a 49 yarder. And Fonseca has had trouble 0 for 3 from this end of the field tonight. So Dash 
Going to go up, maybe change the play. Once they see the defense, a lot of press coverage uh, all the way across the board for the Falcons. Snap is low. Ball's, Ball's down, on the ground. They got it. On to Sui. He's got the ball, and he's going to be dragged down at midfield. Falcons take over with 17 seconds remaining and two timeouts. Wow. And penetration from the middle of the defense. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay here. And penetration's going to come from out of Sui. Watch, he's going to be right there. The snap didn't help that matter any no. at all. And Adesui just picked it up and started working his way toward the north end zone. Now you've got 17 seconds here, Clay, and two timeouts in your back pocket. You can bet that Western's not going to let you beat them deep. So something in the middle of the field might be open here. Let's see if they bring pressure. And if they do, the line's got to block it and give our quarterback time to get the ball where it needs to be. He's got time, and he throws, and he's got the receiver, and it's caught by Molina all the way down to about the 36-yard line. It's going to be a 15-yard pass and catch, first down, and now it may be redemption time for Carson Roberts on the extra point that hit the crossbar. Well, absolutely. If they can get about 10 or 15 more yards, Carson has the leg, no doubt, to get the ball there. Graham, oh, there's flag. There's a flag before the play. Well, flag that's a before late the play. Flag. That it is sure a late is. flag. It sure is. They're going to have to put clock time back on the clock because it had already started and we were three or four seconds right, into the play. Right tackle moved, I believe, here. That's a false start. False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Go first down. Put 12 seconds on the clock. Yeah, there you go. 12 seconds. Yeah, the stay up. The clock had ticked down to eight. They put 12 seconds back on the clock. So now, yeah, you need about 10 or 15 yards. Look how deep the coverage is, Clay. Yep, just go underneath. Nope, he's going to throw it away. Eight seconds remaining. Time for maybe one and more play. Second down and 15. And uh, I tell you what. I almost would have liked to see him. He sees that pressure coming from both sides like that. Just take off up the middle. Yep. Get seven or eight yards, maybe more, and uh, burn one of those timeouts. Here, just got to make sure that you are able to call the timeout. I don't know. Do you give Roberts a shot from here? Sure. I think so, too. Graham is going to roll right, throws. No, nope, just throwing it away once again. So that's incomplete. One second remaining on the clock. So see if they give Roberts a shot or if they just go for it. They're going to go for it, it looks like. Yes, it does. That would be a, uh, about a 58-yard field goal attempt. So, I mean, you got to might as well go ahead and burn your time out here. And they are. And they are. UTPB takes its second charge timeout. This is a 30 second timeout. One second remaining on the clock. Score all knotted up at 24. The Falcons on the 41-yard line are going to uh, try and air it out into the end zone and hope for a miracle. The Mountaineers have five players at the 10-yard line or back. Graham puts it up high. The ball is going to be knocked 
down incomplete. So we're going to be looking at an overtime situation. And uh, we will talk about that when we return. And that is the end of regulation. Western Colorado has chosen to play defense. UTPV will take the ball. Well, we return to overtime here at uh, Stown Broadband Stadium in Midland, Texas. Uh, Kyle, why don't you talk to us about the uh, overtime rule at the uh, college football level? Uh, absolutely. Each team will have a position. Uh, you saw the coin flip. You actually did see the coin flip. Western Colorado won the flip and has decided to go on defense first. So the Falcons will have the ball starting at the 25-yard line. Uh, you have you get your first downs, get your you get a touchdown, get your field goals, whatever it takes. Whatever one team does, the other has to either match it or beat it, depending on what's happening there. As you can see on first down, there goes a oh, run Harris. right up the middle. Harris all the way down to the five yard line. What a time for the biggest run of the night. Yep. Good hole off the left side. You can see the You're going quick H back, and here goes the UTPB again. He's going to get it into the end zone. Wow. Well, Falcons took two plays, two running plays to get up the field and get into the end zone. And they've scored first here in the overtime session. Uh, extra point away from going up 31 to 24. Now, Western will have a chance to uh, match that. They'll have get a possession as well. You can see the first run. There on our Trans Global Productions instant replay. Can't get some people on the field for the extra point. So looks like UTPB is going to have to take a timeout and get the right personnel on. UTP takes its only charge timeout. Yeah, each team only gets a timeout in the overtime. So we'll take it with them and come back and see the extra point.
Well, well, we're going to watch the replay of the touchdown now as Harris takes it in from five yards out. See him offset to the left there. Bounces it outside. No support from the Western Colorado Woo. defense, and he just Man. strolled right on I'm in. I'm telling you, it may be a, a former long jump champion right there. <laughs> a little excited, those two big runs. Roberts on for a very important extra point. Snap is good. The kick is up. And it is good. So the UTPB Falcons have put seven on the board. So now we'll reverse. We're going to stay on the same end of the field. And the Mountaineers have to match them. Yes, they do. They have to score here on this drive. And They'll get the extra point. And start from the 25-yard line. They have the same option that UTPB did. Full set of downs, and yes. uh, if they score, we'll do it all again. Yes, and then they'll flip with Western will get possession, the first possession of the second overtime if that gets there. But right. let's hope that doesn't get there. Well, defense, the defense needs to step up. The defense has stepped up all night long. And so let's see if they can do it one more time. It is still Connor Dash at quarterback. He rolls right. He's got his receiver. It's going to be caught out there. I believe Kai Emsley on the reception. It's going to be a gain of six down to the 19. Yep, soft coverage, keeping everything in front of them on the defensive back end of the Falcons. And they just ran the quick out there for about six yards on first down. Now here's this formation we've seen with three, tie, three wide outs here and a tight end to the other side of the field. Meyer in the backfield as the running back. Second down and four. Dash is going to throw. You know, he's going to scramble. Looking for a receiver. Just throws the ball away. There's a late flag on the play down around the goal line. Yeah, so holding or interference. Are more than likely that will go against the Falcons. Mr. Statistician over here, Mr. Larry <laughs> Thornhill. Yeah, he's got his striped shirt on. Yes, he does. We'll get you a white hat for next week. How about that? Well, the officials are trying to decide. I don't know if they're trying to decide on the where to mark the ball or still talking about the penalty. It looks like they're going to march it down inside the 10 where it'll be first and goal for the Mountaineers from the 9. She'll still uh, having a discussion over here. And, uh, <laughs> not, probably not discussing somebody after game needs to, plans. Somebody but, needs to call the restaurant and tell them we're going to be a little late. Yep. Nope. Pass interference. Defense, Defense. number 35. 35. 15 yards from the spot, the previous spot. Automatic, first down. 15, if it's inside the 20? I, I, it was that on the 19. Half, I, I thought it, it was be half the distance. I thought it was half the distance, but uh, they're going to give him the full 15, so that's going to be first and goal from the four-yard line. Falcons are really going to have their back against the wall here. Should be only half the distance. I bet that's what they're talking about. It could not be a full 15 yards inside the 20-yard line. But they're going to mark it at the five. Mark it at the five, which makes it a 14-yard penalty. First and goal from the five. So Dash brings the Mountaineers up to the line. Meyer still in the backfield as the running back. Three receivers at the bottom of the screen. Dash fumbles the... Football throws it. It's going to uh, be intercepted, but I believe he's going to be out of bounds. Yes. Uh, good try, Dash. Dangerous play there, but it's going to bring up a second and five from the uh, five. And the snap is what messed that whole thing up, just like it did on the turnover at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. Both teams have uh, had struggles with the 
the pass from the center to the quarterback tonight at various times. Same set. Dash takes the snap. He's going to roll left. Got time to throw, but he's going to have to throw it away. Coverage there and pressure coming. And Dash just throws the ball away. So it's going to bring up now third down in what is obviously four down uh, situation oh, yeah. for the Mountaineers. Totally four down situation with the Falcons up by a touchdown. They have to score a touchdown and get the extra point. So let's see if they try to move the pocket again like they did there. Well, great coverage by the secondary from the Falcons. And uh, just no one for Dash to uh, throw the ball to. So they're going to switch. This time got twin receivers bottom and top of the screen. Zone read. Nope. Nope. He's looking left. He throws, and it's going to be caught and touchdown. Kai Emsley, uh, obviously the leading receiver, I think, tonight for the Mountaineers as uh, plenty of time for a net, uh, Dash to complete that. And now the all-important extra point. A little in route from the wide receiver here. Uh, lost, their, lost their contain, and here is a big extra point for the Western Colorado Mountaineers. Snap is good, the kick is up, and it is good. So, we're gonna do it all again. Gonna go to double overtime and uh, switch into the field. So we'll take a break and we'll be back to a Stown Broadband Stadium after this. Well, as we return to the ball game here, double overtime, we were incorrect. They did not switch into the field. So still heading to the north end zone into what wind we have. Western Colorado will take over first and 10 once again from the 25 yard line. Connor Dash, who came in late due to an injury, is looking deep, throws incomplete. Great coverage out there by Lavon Barnett. One-on-one -on -one perfect positioning coverage, as Clay said. Pressure came from up the middle on the uh, Falcon defensive line to force uh, Dash to have to throw that ball maybe a little before he wanted to. Second and 10 for the Mountaineers from the Falcon 25-yard line. Now they've uh, got three receivers at the top of the screen, one at the bottom, no tight end uh, in the ball game. UTPB showing pressure from the they middle. They are. Dash going to get rid of it quick. Throws it over the outside. Obviously a miscommunication there as a receiver going inside. But once again, good coverage by the Falcons. So it's going to bring up now a third down and 10. And this changes things from last time because the Mountaineers can kick a field goal here. They don't have to score the touchdown to keep it going. All they have to do is score something. UTPB has to mash, but right. right now that's a that's not a given for them as much as they've had trouble with field goals tonight. It's true, but this end we don't know. He's 0 for 0 for three at the other end. Look at the tight coverage on the outside the receivers. So third town dash. There's some pressure coming. Fires. And the ball is incomplete. 
Good coverage out there by Dante Stewart. And that's going to bring up now fourth down. That would be about a 42-yard field goal for Fonseca, which I know he, he has the leg. He's kicked 49 last year, and that's what the uh, Mountaineers are going to try just to get some points up there. And uh, then the Falcons will have the opportunity to match or score a touchdown and uh, end the ball game. Make sure you don't jump here and give them a free five yards. Right. Get and your get your rush and make him have to make make the kick. Don't run into the holder or the kicker. Snap is down. The kick. It's a low liner, and it's no good. He missed left, and maybe low, but definitely left. And the Falcons defense is held. So now, the offense or Carson Roberts have a chance to. Uh, Send us to the house. Couple of the Falcons slow getting up. All it takes is three. But they will take over here now in double overtime. Clock not a factor, obviously, but they have a first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Offense looked see, really sharp just a moment ago. See if they run the football well, again here. I don't know. I don't know that you can catch them off guard again, but <laughs> well, you wouldn't think so. But at the same time, see what kind of coverage you get on the back end. I still think they're going to play a little soft. It looks like, and they are going to lay off about seven, eight yards. Yep. So. so that's cover four in secondary. Johnson moves over. Harris takes the ball from Graham. He's going to fight forward, gain of about three yards down to the 22 yard line. And that's what they saw, Clay. I'm talking about the UTPB coaches. That's why they called that because they had soft coverage on the outside. So that's what they're playing is coverage. And they felt like they had a gap over here on the left side to run with on first down. Look for Absec in the slot up at the top of your screen. I don't believe he has any catches tonight. Leading receiver last week, but Harris down inside the 20 is going to be another gain of three. Going to bring up a third down and four from the 19. And they roll the corners up right before the snap, Clay, up on the two wideouts on each side. They rolled and show bumping run coverage. So let's see if they decide to take a shot here. I, I tell you, with number 31 on my sideline, I think I just hand it off to Harris and tell him to hang on. And he did. And he did. And that's what we're going to see. Carson Roberts is going to come on the field and have an opportunity to kick about a 35-yard field goal to lead the Falcons to their first win of the season. Now, Western Colorado does have a timeout. You know, and I, it, they, they may still use it. I hate that rule. If you don't call, I hate it when they wait till right before you snap and then they say timeout, timeout, yep. timeout. I yep. wish they Trying would. To uh, ice the kicker. Yeah, I wish they would take that rule away. If you're going to use it, you got to use it now. And you can't use it after that. 35 so. yards. Which here I, it is for there, the win. Yeah, they did it before he snapped the ball. I'm okay with that. Yeah. So. Carson. All right, 31-31 on the scoreboard. Double overtime, UTPB has Carson Roberts from 35 yards here looking to put the Falcons in the win column for the first time this year. Snap is good, the kick is up. And it is good. Yes. The Falcons come through with the 34-31 win in overtime. 
Kyle, any last thoughts? Well, what a ball game tonight. What an effort we saw from both teams, especially the UTPB defense, to come up big right there at the end in overtime and hold them out. And what a kick by Carson Roberts to win the ball game and get the Falcons in the one column for the first time. I want to thank you for being here with us. Our Trans Global Production College Game of the Week is uh, produced and directed, as always, by Bob Bailey, replay director, slow roll replay director, Debbie Bailey. On our cameras, we have uh, Jason Berridge and Tim Rose. Also, Hagen, Mr. Vertically Challenged Berridge. Up in the booth with me tonight, Larry Thorn here, Thornhill, Kyle Hubbard, and Clay Kennedy, thanks for being with us.